All right, greetings and welcome to the Sunderland Select Board meeting Monday, February 26, 2018. And first up on the agenda, we have the Sunderland, well, actually, we'll start with, I guess, the Sunderland Elementary School, but FY19 budget presentation. So it's all school tonight. Thank you, Ben. <coughs> first one. Yeah, yeah you just, if you, so we'll have to push on the air off. Okay. Are we going to come back? have to come back if finance is in here? No. Sure. Thanks for getting that light. I was just going to say thank you. Yes, three. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Meeting one. One of 18. Yeah. So we have a multimedia presentation tonight, right. I say. We also okay. have a small copy. I'm trying yep. to save on the paper. And, uh, That's very much appreciated. But, uh, so it has to Oh, there you go. Sorry. <laughs> this is our Driving the bus. Sutherland yeah. Elementary. And we're really excited to be here. I have to tell you that this school is unusual in, in that it gets so much out of students. They have such diversity and so many, so many students coming from so many different backgrounds and their achievement is so high that this is a school that really comes together as a team and does incredible things. So um, everything we do, uh, from the central office down in the district, beginning with our district mission statement. This has been the district mission statement for years. And our vision statement, this has been the vision statement. Uh, last summer, the complete admin team helped us to finish um, exactly what, what we wanted. And so our vision statement is um, self-sufficient participants in society. Vibrant, creative, engaging, inclusive learning communities that empower our students to become successful and self sufficient. And I can tell you truly, honestly, and sincerely, that's happening in Sunderland. <coughs> so, again, everything we do is based on our uh, this is our strategic plan. This is where we go. This is our guiding document. This guides us uh, our, right down to our school. Our school councils, where there's a group of community members and, and parents and uh, educators that come together and make the school improvement plan. This has been in place for a while. It was updated this year, this summer. This is our strategic plan. Instructional practice, we're, we're really ensuring that all the needs are met. Assessment and data analysis. Each child gets what they need when they need it. Uh, special education services. We are. We do have a special education task force to be to focus on including students in the greater community. I will bore you with these. You can read these. With these, this is really what guides our work. This is what we're doing. So I'm just going to some really quick student and staff data. So we're projecting of 226 students. That will go up as kindergartners come in, students transfer in and school choice comes in. Right now, with this number, we have 21% of our students are identified as uh, in need of special education services. We're at 51% economically disadvantaged uh, students that do not meet the criteria. Uh, they meet the criteria, actually, to be reduced. Our teachers are qualified. We have 28 licensed teaching professionals in the school. We have 26 instructional assistants, one building administrator. We're choosing in 41 students are coming in and paying to come to Southern School. We have 10 going out to different schools, and one is going to a charter school. Thanks. So this is one of our happy learners, and this is the budget overview. This is. This is our entire operating budget, $3,386,520. We are asking the town a appropriation of the $2,602,832. This is $114,494 over last year's budget. So we're asking for $114,000 more than last year's. <coughs> Uh, it supports our, congr our contractual salary obligations for our collective bargaining agreements. It uh, supports the uh, increases in transportation, summer programming, building, testing, and security, and our support services and technology. We do have other funds, and I'll show you how those funds are going to help us as well. 
Um, so these are the drivers. This is what we're dealing with. These contractual salary increases um, between uh, benefits and salaries and longevity and step movements, 76,763. We have increased English language learner student support. We have a need for our English lay, uh, language learners. Technology, we're asking for $5,868. Summer programming, these are for students who are required by the special education program to have summer learning in reading and math, so there would not be any regression over the summer in their learning. That's $6,500. Building security and testing, $15,000. What we're finding is we have a budget of roughly, and Patty has the exact details, about $18,000 for maintenance of the building. And 15,000 of that goes every year to test the fire alarms, to test the uh, smoke detectors, to, to uh, have them. So all of these things need to be done. So what we need to do is to pull it out because what's happening to the building is we're looking at some, you would probably begin to think is deferred maintenance, but it's really just, we're using our maintenance budget just to keep our building tested, and these are required by the state. Special education transportation, 14500 That's a big one. And then field trips. We, we do have, we have a little increase in field trips. We have saved $13,000 in hired. So that means that we have hired people that were we budgeted for the mid-level and we hired them a little bit lower on the steps, so we were able to save money from what we budgeted last year. Sped testing, we're saving $2,000 there. Uh, building copiers, another $2,000. Central office costs, $2,648. And our telephone, we're saving $1,700. So we're able to decrease those. So these are the other uh, question. Those three savings, is that just for this year or is that an ongoing savings for the previous costs? I there are there changes from last year, but we're hoping that they the the telephone is gonna be permanent, the building copiers will be permanent. The central office is going to go based on our uh, population, our percentage of our population. Um, and it's been testing um, We've been seeing a lot of kids come in. So we've done a lot of testing in the past couple of years, and now we're in the point where we're adding summer programming services and other SPED services. So that might spike up again if we have new kids that come in and need evaluative right. testing. But right now, we've tested all our kids, and now we're putting our, our money back into servicing them on their IEP. And the phone, did you guys switch over to Boyd? Is that why? No, it, it's just it, um, with when we when we actually changed our charter of accounts, and I've got everybody putting the same numbers in the same accounts, we notice that we're constantly over budgeted in phone. So let's just cut it down. There's no sense, con you know, continuing to be 2,000 in excess. So we'll cut 17 out, that 1,700 this year, and see how we do. Okay, thanks. So these are our other funds, and you can see we're getting over three quarters of a million dollars, seven hundred eighty-four thousand two hundred forty-one in other funding. And this is our special education grant, two hundred fifty-six thousand six hundred seventy. This grant pays teacher salaries, instructional assistant salaries, medical and therapeutic services. Those include occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech and language. Um, so this, this really helps out a lot. And, and the, the grant comes from the, from the state and the feds, but it comes to the state. And it comes to the whole, all five schools, but Sunderland really, really gets um, a good portion. 45,000 from our early childhood revolving. Our program is phenomenally successful. That's paying for uh, teacher salaries in the inclusive, preschool inclusive learning environment. Title one. 15,000, it pays for an inclusionary specialist position, uh, part of a uh, reading, I think it's a reading specialist, uh, which helps the, uh, Title one is essentially for economic and disadvantaged students, but it, all, it, it, it helps students who are struggling to uh, master the skills. 
Uh, school choice, we're getting four hundred and sixty-six thousand seven hundred sixty-five dollars. That pays classroom teacher salaries and instructional assistant salaries. So we do get a lot of support from these otherwise uh, other funds. <coughs> so this is our uh, proposed expenditures. This is what we're asking for this year. Um, out of the whole, instruction takes 78% of our budget that we're asking for. And that includes with all the other funding, with the funding from the town, with your chapter 70, with all of that, we spend 78% on instruction, which is the business we're in, and as we should. Uh, other student services, this is transportation, this is nursing, uh, food service, 5%. This is administration, 11%. Buildings and facilities, 6%. So, so the building gets 6% of the overall budget administration. And then I will break it down in those four areas so you can see even closer. Okay. Thank you. Again, this is another way of looking at our revenue, our revenue sources. The town appropriation is 76.84%. That includes your chapter 70, whatever you get from the state, whatever they deem that we get, 13.78% of our revenue comes from school choice. Spend revolving is 4.93%. Uh, early childhood revolving, 1.33, Title I, 0.47, and our grant is 2.65%. So that's how it works out. So this is our administration. This is 11% of the whole budget. So we took 11% of the budget and we figured out that the superintendent of business and the finance offices are 21% of 11% of the budget. So you can kind of do the math. So you've got 11% of the budget and 27%. Our technology is 15%. That is our, all our technology people that work in the district uh, that fix the computers, keep the computers running, set them up the instruction that the kids get from our uh, central office. Uh, in insurance, retirement, and other adjustments. Whoa. <laughs> 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 fix that. Um, 14%. We'll fix that. Don't worry. Um, I, I was just so overwhelmed by the 14% on the adjustments. <laughs> I spoke the time. So our building-based leadership and clerical services, that's 42%. That's our principal. That's the people working in the office that's uh, taking care of the, all the different programs that we have and what we do there. School committee and legal services, that's 2% of the of 11%. So let's move on uh, to- Dr. Here. Yes. One second. Um, ben, could you go, could you go back to two slides on to the, the uh, revenue sources? Yep. All right. All right. Come on. There you go. Now, where's, where's the state? It's rolled into the town yeah. appropriation. Our Chapter 70, we don't know because the town gets the Chapter 70. We don't. I can tell you with the high school because we get the Chapter 70 allowance. And the only reason I ask, okay, <laughs> is, it, and I, I, I think to me, to, to me, the state contribute contribution to, to local education for the town of Sunderland has significantly decreased from 15 years ago, where you, we used to get almost 65% of the elementary school was through mm -hmm. the state. Now, now I think we're down like 25, 30%, maybe. Your total allocation, of, well, all your, your, your required contribution is 1,569,862. But what you're getting for Chapter 70, um, and you're below target, but your Chapter 78 uh, is 865368 dollars. So um, and you, like everyone else, got a minimum of twenty dollars per pupil increase. So I, I see. I think that's a, I, I think that's a key point that sometimes people that we gloss over in, in, is that our our contribution towards local education has continually gone down over the years so it's, it's, I mean, been, it's being forced to the local level i mean it's right. really important to bear in mind we're, we're well above minimum contribution in, in the form of spending how much how at, much did we appropriate last year to elementary school 
Do we have that? Last year we appropriated two four eight eight three three eight. Yeah, eleven one hundred and fourteen thousand less, less than, than this year. year. Right. But Tom, to, to your point. The, the, the rub the rub is about how that, that uh, state allocation goes across. And what you'll hear at the state level, and we heard in, you guys heard in January, is record distribution. But it's not the same pie anymore. But you and Waitley mm -hmm. are, are both below target as right. far as your local contributions. Right. Uh, Conway and Deerfield are above. But okay. your target should be 7716. You're close. You're at 7605. Mm -hmm. So you're almost at target. Right. We've had been, in the state. And there have been years past in the in the past five where we've made the we, we've made the there have been formula shifts. Yeah. And <laughs> we've we've gotten <laughs> dinged. Well we you know, we uh, on the on the <clears throat> revenue side, and this is nothing against any department, any of the budget process. This is just inputs and outputs. When you start talking about the inputs being a, a smaller and smaller and smaller available pool of inputs, then the larger pieces of the pie show up at the local tax level. Mm -hmm. So when you when you when you have for a number of years, Patty, uh, a, a well above minimum contribution, and then it's demonstrated your ability to pay is part of the formula. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to take your ability to pay, and that's now your new minimum, and the target continues. We were, we were well above, like 1.78 at one year that I was in the finance committee, and now we're just below. It drives me nuts. Sorry, but well, it, that's, and, that's formulation. That's not necessarily and the- I, And I, I, I don't disagree with you, because yep. I mean, we're looking at a budget of 2019, mm -hmm. and they're only looking at 2015 filed income. Right. Like, right. I, I, and the 2000, I mean, I know they only do the equalized value every year. Yep. So that's 2016. That's yep. still kind of relative. Sure. But you're still basing it on the income of, uh, of the population in 2015. I think that yep. should be updated. Great point. I think the bigger picture here is, is I think you're missing an opportunity to tell a very important story by not breaking that part out to town and state appropriations. Okay. And especially if you were to look at this chart, if you were to make this chart over the last, say, 10 years, you would illustrate Tom's point very clearly where you'd see that piece of the state by dwindling. And so now, it, and this is the part of the story that needs to be told because even if you had no increases in costs over that period, let's just say everybody's happy, it's magical land, and we don't have to increase our costs, the state percentage keeps getting smaller and smaller, and the burden on local taxpayers keeps going up and up. Irregardless of whatever you think of the work you're spending money on, <coughs> that's something that's happening and needs to be dealt with. So in Dr. Carey's defense, she wanted to put that on there, but we never have. And so I was nervous to put it on there because I didn't know how you guys would react to that. But she wanted to put that on there. And I was the one that was saying, I don't know how they're going to react if they see that. But you're asking for it, so we'll do it. Well, I don't think we, 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 we've, we've been seeing it for the last <coughs> We, as, we, as every town uh, in the Every state. town, absolutely. But Sherry did, add, Sherry did mention she's doing another um, we're going to do a community newsletter that's going to be a special supplement that's just going to talk about the budget and town nice. meeting and that's good. That's good. Uh, that's, what drivers are. That may well be the place. something that I will definitely. Well, because right, right now what happens, what happens is that none of us participate in the conversation on the state level. Mm -hmm. the st and there's, you know, the governor's <laughs> on in town. You know, you're supposed to be here tonight. We did it. We did it. Yeah. But but the the the, the, the state no the state people don't they, they don't come back and, and talk to us about these. You know, they they they're, they're doing other negotiation. And that and just for a plug for one second, that's why, you know, Steve Kulik is leaving. Steve Kulik's been a tremendous supporter of, of of the rural population for a long time now. And that's why this this election is going to be so so critical that we get someone that understands what happens on the local level because this is exactly what we're trying to say. So who ends up who ends up having these lengthy discussions is between the school committee, the school administration, and the boards of selectmen and the finance committees. Okay, and a lot of that isn't isn't our our, our conversation, but you know it's things that have been in place for a number of years. And, and if Sunderland was still getting at the 65 percent, guess what? We're we're fat, dumb, and happy. We we'd be we'd be happy we'd be happy campers. And, and and your your presentation would be 15 minutes, and you'd be gone. You know, and not and not that I, I want to add any more meetings, but. Um, <laughs> 
Thank Deerfield you. Deerfield and Conway do a pre-town meeting mm -hmm. where they get their, you know, people come and, and, and uh, Dr. Carey and I, the principals are there, and, and we talk about, like, what could be the issues that come up on the articles. Sure. And, and it really, uh, I, you know, again, I was like, oh, another meeting. But it really speeds up town meeting because the people, especially when I've seen it really uh, work in Deerfield, they already, now they understand the issues before they get to the town. So we're not that's, talking about it on the floor. That's what we're trying floor. to do with some of these other communications, right? right? Because then you're debating about the value of it rather than the mechanics of it. Correct. I think it would, yeah, to see that over time chart, like, yeah, the, right, you know, like a 10 year or whatever, you know. Here's the school budget over time, you know, and here's the state piece of that, and then we'd see. <laughs> I, I, it's a really important story to tell that doesn't really get told because we end up squabbling over what's left and dealing with the, the ramifications of it, and that just gets glossed over and, and buried. Yeah, and I'm wondering too. I think there is there is a, um, an actual bar graph on the DOE site. Where the we, can, we can pull it down, yeah. Just pull it out and show you. Mm -hmm. the, 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 yeah. the I think it would be very good to, for people to see. So I certainly will uh, fix this. Yeah. Or even just a separate separate one with that. Yeah. yeah. Right, the, the budget versus yeah. in this, right. is the chapter 70. Right, you don't need all, all you don't need all those little breakouts. Because then you'd have to do that repeatedly. Yeah. And I, and I think the other thing that people don't, don't don't understand when they look at this is that your chapter seventy eight is eight hundred and sixty five thousand three sixty eight. That needs to get allocated over three schools. Right. The elementary, right. the frontier, right. yeah. and the technical school. Correct. All right. yeah. so, um, it's not like it all goes to one. Right. Correct. Great point. Absolutely. And then then when. Um, Governor Patrick, when he, Deval Patrick, when he took over, he, he really screwed us up for a while because of the, the, the school funding came back to the region, even the regional town. It's it was going to go to the districts versus the towns. Yeah, it went to the districts versus the towns. It was very, it was very difficult for the first couple of years to understand how it worked, for us at least. We're simple. Thank you. And, you know, Thank you, Ben, for going back there. Sure. Teacher. Sorry, I took so much time. No, I, I thought it, I did think it was important. I agree. So again, the administration. So this is seventy-eight percent of our budget. Now, of the seventy-eight percent of the budget, fifty-seven percent goes to teachers, as it should. So of course, the biggest amount of money we spend is on uh, teaching the students. Medical and therapeutic services, seven percent. Guidance and psychology services, 3%. Uh, instructional services, 25%. Our uh, supplies and materials is only 6%. And then we have a curriculum and a special ed education and an early childhood education director, and that's 3%. They're spread out over the four schools. So that's where our instruction money goes. Uh, our building and facilities, that's only 6% of our budget. But 43% of that money goes to custodian services. Maintenance of buildings and grounds and equipment, 29%. Uh, our networking and telecommunications are at 7 And then our heating and utilities is 21%. And then um, other school services. So our health service is 45%. Uh, food is 5 And transportation takes up 50% of 5% of the budget. So that's, that's where those stand. And then um, essentially these are some great kids, this is a great school. We really do thank everyone for the generous support. It's a great school. It's definitely a school where children grow and experience great things. Uh, the staff, the people, I can't speak enough about how wonderful that school is. And they couldn't do it without their school. So that's that's in a nutshell uh, the Sunderland uh, Elementary, but Patty can go through the details, the numbers, if you have any questions. I know you all have an opportunity to look at the budget. She said it earlier on. Good, Mr. Chair. Yep. Uh, one question, Patty. What was the what if you could? Uh, what's the carve out of electricity that we're generating through the PV part? Because that's essentially a budget shift. 
We, we, we took that out of the budget last year to reduce our budget, and it, it was approximately $34,000. And I, I've been um, talking with Sherry and with your utility consultant because we have to add that back at the end of the year, what the actual cost of electricity is so that we can make net school spending. It needs to get added in. Right, so it's part of your formula for reporting. Correct. But town appropriation is a different animal. But we don't get an appropriation anymore. You appropriate it at all, but I do, and I talk to Sherry and the other consultant and say that's fine but you need to keep track to see how much is the share of the of the school because just like the health insurance and part of the retirement assessment we need to put the electricity back because you know that the, uh, for two years in a row we they said we didn't meet net school spending and I don't want to be in that position so we need to add that back and I raise the point not only not 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 in any kind of critical light of the of the expense appropriation the expense request here but just to bear in mind that the town still you know has those costs associated mm. with our debt with the PV and the lease so those, yep. that was that was that was a straight shift they didn't go away, but they're out of this budget and they're in another kettle for all the right reasons. There's other departments, including the building that you're in right now, is in the same situation. The library is the same situation. But I can't let that, that point go because in five years, people will have forgotten it. Right. Yep. Good point. Yeah. So um, do, you, do you want, uh, if we look at our budget, um, you should have on version two of this, uh, February 12th. 2.183, yes. <laughs> um, and there's the super, uh, page one is the superintendent's budget message, which I'll let you read on your own. And then page three of 32 is the explanation of the summary page um, that we will go through. And then the ch Dr. Carey, put, we put the charts in. So if we go to page nine of 32, this was a new page that we, um, where it was introduced last year. Um, and I think it really tells, a, it's a great snapshot for us. Um, on the left is the number of our, our students we had on October 1st. And we freeze that because that's what our funding is based on for okay. 2019. And then if you look down below, we're projecting 2019. Um, and those numbers in grades, kindergarten through um, uh, one, well, actually it's one through six, uh, gets updated monthly that as we do our uh, enrollment. Um, and the last time I did speak with Erica, we had 16 students enrolled, uh, 16 uh, residents enrolled uh, in kindergarten. Uh, and we're expecting... Uh, right. we're, for kindergarten, we're expecting close to 30. Um, so that's, uh, that's current registrations, um, but we're aware of others that are going to register. We're in the middle of the process right now. And that's, that's inside the expense development? That's inside the budget development? Yes, yes, yes it is. And then again, we also, 30 is the max that we can have for, uh, for pre-K, so we're gonna try to max out our pre-K as well. Uh, on the right hand side is our staffing uh, and some of these uh, positions uh, changed from the time we did the budget to what was actual and that would be the occupational therapist. Um, we added a half a day but it um, and that occurred at the uh, in probably January or February of last year but what happened was that um, we were lucky we had someone uh, leave and it was high on the scale. Sure. So we were able to bring in someone lower on the scale and increase services and still save money. Um, the instructional assistant, uh, there's two that just flop between classroom and, and special ed. And then we are um, asking for one new position called an early childhood interventionist because of the number of students we have coming in at the pre-K level um, there's, there, we need more, they need more services and uh, early childhood interventionist is going to save us some money um, so that we can keep these children maintained in our programs and not have to go out. Um, we were just informed recently, we, um, the May Center uh, in, is in West Springfield. And that's where these children would go. They recently had to move their buildings, so the state gave them an increase. So we were paying $110,000 per student. We're now paying $116,000 per student. Perfect. So it's very important that we maintain these programs in-house. Do those programs, those programs attract uh, uh, potential students from other districts? Not at the early childhood level, but level. when we get to the horizon, once they get to the kindergarten level and we and they 
they we can bring them into the horizons program um, but early childhood every town has to own their own got it so um but but we're seeing a lot of kids of our own coming in at the early childhood level going to need these services yeah, it, essentially it's an it's an additional special education liaison that's going to going to focus on social emotional supports pushing support in the classroom pull out groups um facilitate iep meetings um be a case manager and yeah. as well help train staff um both from an academic and behavioral standpoint as well and working in grades k through uh, pre-k through two okay. and, and how do you use uh or do you use uh, student teachers from local universities and colleges and how how do you use them pretty regularly um so every each semester we'll have anywhere from two to three student teachers um and you know it, it varies from classroom to classroom it's ultimately it's up to the classroom teacher um but whether it's small group support entire class instruction um okay so you, but you do use them oh absolutely yes yep yeah. we um have a very good partnership with the um masters of teaching program at umass and we'll also see student teachers from mount holyoke and smith college as well those are really the main three okay Thank you. And then down the bottom um, are our teachers' credentials broken down by those are the columns um, in their uh, bargaining unit. Um, so we have eight teachers with bachelor's degrees, three with plus 15, 14 with master's, four with master's plus 15, five with master's plus 30, and two um, that with master's, 45 are CAGs. So 10, 10 of 32 is really telling us, telling the story of where we're going from the appropriation we had last year of $2,488,388. Um, and we had the negotiated steps, which were um, $21,491. We had the negotiated increase of 2.5% that added $39,198. We had degree changes of 4042 we had people qualifying for longevities uh, that increased the budget 6,250. We have an allowance for um, increases to the non-union salaries of 4,016. We're increasing our ELL tutor use by 5,000. Um, the piece of the ECI that we were just talking about that would be um, partially funded by the town and then we were using other grant monies would be 10,000. And then it's offset a little bit by some savings we did this year in our hirings of 13,234. Uh, our regional transportation is small increase of 779. Um, this is the fifth and final year of our contract um, with Gripco. So we will be going out to bid um, after this. And um, there, we're gonna have to have a discussion amongst all the towns. I was telling the school committees um, the Franklin County uh, business managers want to go out for a, a county-wide um, bid, and I don't know that that would be beneficial yeah, for us. One of the nationals, or, yeah, I hear you. It, it, because I mean, even this last time, um, some of the other districts get upset because they don't have like a Gripco in their areas, so they're they don't have it. So we have we bid together. And then those of us that want to have a pullout, we always pull out. So the, la the last time we did this, the difference between Gribco and Kizmeskis, who was the only other bidder, was uh, over $100,000. So um, I, I will bring that information back to our school committee, but I don't think it's something that we're going to want to participate in because I don't think it's something that would be beneficial to us. And then we'll be doing our own um, bid for transportation. At that level, if I could, Patty, at that level, uh, is there is there multiple bidders going yeah, out as they're a solo? Trying to, yeah. That's what they're trying to attract. They're trying to attract, right, right now it's Kizmeskis, um, Gribco, and then there's a small other company out of Orange, um, in the Orange <coughs> Mahar region. And they stick with them, and sure. we stick with Gribco, and everyone else has got Kizmeskis. Yeah. And they want to bring in some of the national firms, right. um, some of the big firms. Um, but that would mean we'd all have to go in uh, for that, for them. We, 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 can't, we can't seem to draw interest because when we say we're doing two bids, one for everybody and then one if everybody was separate, and they kind of walk away at that point. Well, also, if you look at the area, the, the, the total bid area. The geographical area is huge. Mm -hmm. 
not as attractive as you know negotiating the then pick a city right. insert a city name here you know, 40 square miles versus you know 1400 I think we could do a better job amongst all of us with our sped transportation mm. because we've got the same vendors picking up the same kids going to the same place uh. But we're all paying sure. the fare. <laughs> well, so. on, on, on that topic, if I could just for one second, and this goes to the frontier budget. If we send students to Smith vocational, okay, and I know we have two students, right? Mm -hmm. And I know Deerfield has a few and or had and Whiteley had a couple. We we should try to work something out in that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Because our, our I mean we have we it's a if per head look, per day. What's that? Per head per day. It, it's a significant amount of money just to, and we're responsible for that transportation. Correct. But, and again, but I do report that at the end of the year, on the end of the year report. So it gets reported as town, money is appropriated by the town for, uh, for student expenditures. I'd rather see the money go to education exactly. versus somebody than, 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 sending six vans to Smith and again I'm not I'm not questioned about Smith location I understand why it's done and I understand that I understand that but if we're trying to send six vans and every van is getting mm -hmm. two kids yeah <clears throat> right or one <laughs> kid and uh, they don't have any I think they have kids but they don't have any transportation I think the kids drive themselves right yeah. now there you go. well when they get older they're driving themselves right I mean we we've actually one last year two years ago we actually asked the parents we'd pay we said we'd pay the parents yeah um, <laughs> right I mean and they, yeah. they didn't take advantage of that so I mean so, okay so it's just you and Waitley right now that have kids right there. but we you could almost buy a car would come by a van and give it to the one parent and say, hey, uh, drive all these kids, and we'd end up making, we'd end up saving money. Well, you, you, well, it, well, I know with special education, we are, we are allowed to uh, pay the parent to transport at the federal rate per mile. Mm -hmm. Which is like 54 cents. It's 54 and a half cents, I think, right now. Hmm. But you, you can see as she moves on with the um, <coughs> transportation is 14,000. Uh, 500 right. increased. So our field trips, um, 1490 dollars. Um, th this was something, um, again, when we did the chart of accounts, it got lost, and this is money that was uh, that we are spending. Um, so we want to add it. I've seen it spent twice now against the zero budget line. So we, why, why is the budget line zero? Um, SPED support services are going to increase by the 2032 dollars, and I explained that earlier. Um, that's why testing's going down. We're going from the testing to the here's what you need to do. So we need supplemental services in 2032. Technology, software, and hardware is uh, an increase of 5,868. Part of this is um, an increase in for one-to-one -one devices and replacing of smart boards. Um, it's almost cheaper to replace the smart board than try to buy a new bulb. Um, and it's an also a difference in, in the way we're allocating some of the softwares. So that's why it increased. Uh, reading camp, again, this is something that happens every year and we have no budget line for it. Um, so we're adding $6,500. Uh, as Dr. Carey explained to you, we, we'd like to pull, we, our, our maintenance budget line is $18,000. And of that, $15,000 is spent on testing that's required. It's our Siemens contract of six grand. It's the fire um, alarm testing. It's the uh, suppression system testing. It's our pest control. So we really are basically left with $3,000 a year to fix the building and that's just not enough. So, so does, excuse me, Mr. Chair. No. So, so does the, the regional school district, do they bid that out and, and work with one contract for all the schools and divide it up or is each school going out separately? Um, we work again with the Franklin County um, region of governments, uh, the business managers. So yep. some of these services we do all bid together, um, like uh, the fire extinguisher one we just did um, together uh, so to get better pricing. So mm -hmm. some of them we do and then others are just we do it ourselves. Other cells like stay within the, well Siemens uh, that towns. Siemens that was some that was an energy project we yeah. did and so okay the things like extinguishers sprinklers pest control that totally get it I, and I, I applaud the effort of pulling that out as a recurring expense it doesn't help the building it just keeps the stamp on it saying you can use it right. 
And we really need $18,000 to, to, to make right. the fixes to, to keep the building and, um, and working. We've identified a, a number of projects for the physical part of the building. Mm -hmm. And many times we're not sure how much end of the year funds we have left until sure. June. Um, and then at that point, we're figuring out, all right, there's $8,000, what, what can that go towards? And when we're trying, and we're trying to, um, we're trying, we're we, not trying, we are going to be changing that. Um, I have been, since I've gotten here, been asking for an online purchasing uh, order system. It's done manually in all five schools, which is, I have no idea how much money is spent until we pay the bill. Uh, and Dr. Carey, I went to when her first year here. I went to her, and she said to me, "What's you know, what's your biggest?" And I said, "We need to get online with purchase orders." So she gave me some budget money, and we're doing that. Um, unfortunately, the person who we were working with fell ill, so it's been a slow timing. And then also, um, technology director and I were having a disagreement. He were, we were putting $30,000 in the budget to go to our accounting system out into a cloud, and that would be $30,000 every year. Um, and I'm really not for that. Um, the vendor keeps saying it's going to be, when we go to purchase orders, it's going to make it easier. Um, so when we finally saw the demo and I showed him the difference between what the easiness would be it's not worth the recurring $30,000. So we were able to cut that out of, of, this, of the budget, the central office budget this year, because we used the funds last, the 30,000 last year, to buy a bigger server. And so we bought a so bigger server. Yourself. We're gonna do it ourselves. Bought the bigger server, it was put in place last Friday. We're gonna start training. Um, we're gonna start uh, training our secretaries, our principals. They'll have more hands-on uh, approval of purchases um, and they're gonna. They can. They can use it for FY18, but they're definitely gonna be using it in FY19. And I, it's it's gonna be a change. It's Sorry. gonna be a difficult, but we'll we'll work through it. And I think we'll be better off because I think we'll be able to see our save where our savings are earlier in the year than we do now. What about increased security if you're taking on the server administration? Cool. I, I do that now because I set up all the the, the users um, and, and then the workflows and everything, and I'm hoping that's something that, that I can pass back to technology. Um, but they, but that Scott Scott Paul is amazing. He does a lot with his staff of four people. So I don't know if that's something you know um, that I will get there. But you're right. It, it, we've already been working on that because they told me I could set start setting up the security. And it'll just roll over to the new server. So we spent some time in the summer uh, setting up the security levels for everybody. Um, sped transportation, fourteen thousand five. This is sort of like a two-year catch-up piece because when we did the budget last year, the kids came in, and these are pre-K kids. They came in <coughs> after the budget was done. So the FY17 budget we paid about, uh, we were short, and the FY18 budget we're going to be short. So because I didn't catch it in time, so that we were over in 17, we were over in 18. So we need to add it in 19 because these were kids that came in as pre-K. They're still going to continue to get sped, sped uh, transportation as kindergartners and first graders. Students come in at pre-K when they churn two years nine months. So we can't, we can't say September 1, we know we're going to have sure. 30 students. We legally have to take them in if they're identified as in need of special education services when they churn 2.9. And so we just don't know. So they end up on our doorstep and, and they have multitude of, uh, and we can't put them on the same bus as other students. They, they need to be seat belted in and harnessed. So it, it, it's it's a moving target. We could get a new one tomorrow that we didn't even know. Um, so. And then we had some small operational decreases. The telephone, as we said, we were tracking the sped testing and evals. Uh, the building copiers, um, we got um, we we made some shifts 
uh, with the copiers in the building, and I think we took one offline um, and bought a bigger one so th that we could save some money. Um, and, and I think we've been happy, pretty happy with uh, Aztec, and uh, they've done a great job there. Uh, and then decrease in central office um, is going, some of it's based um, on the percentage 1843 down to 1727 based on the population. Um, and so we're, you're gonna save $2,648. But like I said, there was that big, there was a big decrease of $30,000 um, for, um, for the cloud services that we're not carrying anymore. We uh, also did a bid at the high school once we moved in for copier services. So we, our copier costs have reduced with this new contract. Uh, but and the other big add-on was the we added a regionalized food service director. So now we have one food service director for the entire district instead of having five different ones for each school. Are you uh, combining for the copier service? Is that combined across all like the whole district, or are you doing it on a school by school basis? We right now we're trying it at Frontier, and we're breaking it out between Frontier and Central Office. Um, and we're, it, 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 it seems to be working. So I, I can print something in, uh, from my office, and if I go into the uh, multi-purpose room and someone's running a big job there, I can then run upstairs to any copier and with my little tag. No, and, that's, and that's not what my, I mean, actually. In, in terms of, uh, like, contracts and bidding. I, I, in other words, are you bidding school by school, or are you trying to combine it? Well, like or, I said, we're testing it with Frontier and Central Office. Because it is, it's a big investment. Um, because we didn't, we did not just copy. We're trying to get everybody moved to copiers and lessen the amount of desktops that we have. Yeah. So they provided us with the desktops. So we, we were spending a lot of money in toners and everything else. So we're testing it with Frontier. If it works, we're going to do the four. We're going to do the union schools together as well. But it's a timing issue, David, because right now everybody's all over the place. Yep. Um, well, so it's, it's always been, I think, a challenge that but sooner or later you either have to not do it or bite the bullet and, and do it, because well, otherwise will, you won't get the savings. We, we did it at Frontier, which I think is the hardest school to do, because being that it's a high school. Everybody right. was afraid to give up their printers, but we have not had that many complaints. Uh, and when we, when we do have complaints, CBS is there to help us work through the issues. Well, do you disagree, Derek? Oh, no, the, the copier systems are working great. Do we have complaints about teachers losing their classroom printer? Yeah. Oh, yeah, but it has been. rolled out, you explained, explained you showed them the savings, they understood. Right. They, they, you know, they got used to it, I think, by mid-year that they, they, they're on board with it, so. And the fact that you can go anywhere and print is just, <coughs> is just to me, wonderful. Cause well, it should be, is it? because you should be networked. There's no reason in today's world why that should not occur. Right. I mean, so you can go anywhere and print you know, in the building. Yeah which is pretty cool. That's how it should be. Um, so altogether, it's a net change of $114,494, or 4.6%. So our appropri our town um, appropriation would be $2,602,000, why can't I say uh, $2,602,832. Um, so the next pages, pages 11, um, is the actual byline detail of the <coughs> appropriation and that goes until page 21 of 32 and then when we look at if you look at page 22 of 32 this starts showing you our, our expenditures by category for all for everything for all the funds that we're using um, so, as Dr. Carey had told you, if you look on page 28 of 32, you'll see that agrees to her, her um, diagram that the, L, that the town would be responsible for 76.8% of the budget. School choice would provide almost 14%. Uh, the early childhood revolving 1.33%, SPED revolving 4.9%, Title 1.4%, and the uh, 94, 142 allocation 2.65. So the, that we're requesting 2 million six from you, the total expenditures at the school will be 3 million 386,520. Ms. 
Speaking of printers, are any of those printers duplex? Because if you duplex this, it would save a lot of volume. Yes. And, and you know what? I did one duplex, and again, it's like uh, some people like it, and some people will go, "Can you do this one?" And I, you, you, you know, I, I, I just said I kill so many trees during budget season. It, it it hurt. It physically hurts me. Anything we can do to cut down on the more acid paper that gets sent around. Would be All right, fun. that's great. I'm so, going to start double siding. So, it. so the, basically, when I when I look at, I'm back on page uh, ten of thirty two. When, when I look at the budget, about se approximately 75% of your budget increase this year is uh, contractual and or employ employee increases. Mm -hmm. and, and then that's true too. Um, that's one other thing. In, in the central office, it, that was also a big expenditure, was the increase in the cost of the central office health insurance benefits. And, and that's and, not without adding any new staff? No, no new staff. But what happened was um, our... Ben got a big pay raise? Pardon? Ben got a big pay raise? <laughs> no. No. Oh, then, no, that was not. FY7. No. Oh, that was, oh, no. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, with the, the health insurance, and, you, and you're going through it yourselves, um, we're with the Hampshire County Group Insurance Trust, and we had... Um, they wanted to make changes to the plan. Yes. Uh, so... GIC did too. The, uh, did they? they? They they cut a lot of participants out of their plan. Um, but in order to make the changes, we had to negotiate with we have to negotiate with the union. So not only is the cost there, but the cost we need to negotiate with the unions is also there. They get twenty five percent of the savings by law. So one year we're gonna have it'll be a, it'll be reduced next year because I don't. I think it's every year. I think it's the first year. See, what, what we, it, it's, a, it's a difficult, see, it, it's an interesting conversation when you look at numbers. I think numbers can tell, tell, tells a story. So in the town, if our new growth, our new growth in two and a half, a lot increase, we'll, we'll, we increase about this year, what, $150,000, $152,000, $154,000? All right, $160,000. So, so, so our total new growth is $160,000. And, and the school increase is 114. I'm not saying that's good, bad, or indifferent. Just, I'm just looking at the numbers right now. And 75% of, of the school increase, and it's not yours, it's ours, of our school's increase, 75% is... Um, People. But yeah, labor. Right. And that's and, the same break out of the And when you, when, you, when you look at the increases, um, there was a negotiated increase of 2.5%, and steps were about 21,000. So on average, that's another, on average, 1%. So that was a 3.5% increase that last year. So you'd have to ask yourself, is 3.5%, would you consider 3.5% a huge increase? That's a great question. And but right. now you're looking, so you've got, right now, you've got a lot of young staff that are stepping. Yeah. We've got other towns whose teachers are retiring, so their steps are low, but their retirement benefit. Remember oh, a couple of years 17, ago, we yeah, had three teachers years. go, and that was 70 grand yeah. to have three teachers go. No, I, I, to, to me, I just, I just think... I, I don't I don't I don't know if someone's doing a, a good job. I don't know if a three percent increase is an uh, an outrageous pay increase. Well, because I mean I know inflation's been low lately, but you know figure even if it's at two percent, then then really you're talking about a one percent pay increase and two percent of that just is just keeping up with the cost of living. So I guess don't, see don't, those are hard those are hard, those are hard numbers that you need to discuss because if you look at it if you look at a two and a half by by law we can increase our budget by two and a half percent well you got a two and a half percent increase just in salary in salary right just 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 negotiated and and then you know a one percent step so you're looking at three and a half is that a lot is that a huge increase. I, I don't, you know, I, I think, you know, well, that, their that's insurance a point. is going up 4.94 percent. Sure, right. that's one of the bigger. So their, their insurance costs are going up more than they are their, than their salary is. So and, they're and, they, so they're everyone, myself included, yep. looks at look, looks at it as I'm still in a deficit mode. 
and and that's one of the things that we try to talk about over the years is about increase and we did a few years ago we went from 50 to 55 percent and and we looked at you know we looked at trying to go to 60 percent um this year but i don't think there's i just so you guys know i don't think there's any way we could afford to do that but there was there was a chance i mean we we wanted as we understand i mean you know some sometimes you especially for our lesser paid employees um health insurance some, sometimes you almost have people working for the insurance we do i mean i, I will tell you most of our food service employees and some of our instructional assistants they pay for their insurance that's it right and i don't necessarily get, i don't think that's right but we tried to we tried to increase to go 60 we just don't have the money to do you know we're, we're in this catch-22 and, and and unfortunately most of the time we, we have to be bad guys but because we're, we're the we have to somehow make these things work but when i look at when i look at you know 55 percent going to 60 a lot of people wouldn't consider that a big deal but for a lot of our people it is it is across our town not just the schools but, but across across our, across across our schools all, I agree. library library highway police whatever that's a big deal but when we had we we at the end of last year because our school lunch programs all five of them are losing money um we bring in an outside person and they tell us that our staff uh, our, our our costs to staff are very high for our region but i think that's because people look at well look how much they have to pay for their insurance so they give them the increase to cover the insurance but now we're losing money because our our, our labor costs are too high we and so that then that means the parents are going to pay more for lunch which means more students are going to start bringing their lunch and it's just oh, right into so catch 22. yeah right and again i just I just think the numbers, I, you know, numbers to me help understand a budget. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, and just like that pie graph, to me, um, the 76,000, again, 75%, I, I don't think that that's out of line with a budget with the number of staff that you have. And, and you look at the other, the other expenses that you have, um, you're not adding any students you are you're not adding any staff um, we're, we're asking for one new staff member yeah but that one new staff adding that one new staff member is going to save us out of district tuitions so that that that's the that's what we have to balance if we, we add the early childhood interventionist will that allow us to keep these students serviceable in our schools I could, Mr. Chair, because you're talking about budgets and grand scope. If you took the graph that you had, that was the, the, the graph of the budget as it's cut up, that could easily be the town budget, and the 76% could easily be our, t our total education contribution. And then we've got, to, we've, got to, we've got to pile all the rest into threes and ones and two percents and manage all those things. Likewise, as we talk about this revenue stream, and of course that's on our side, uh, we talked about $163,000 worth of new growth, and that new growth is, is all of it. That's, that's, that's two and a half. If the 76%, and I'm going to use the numbers coarsely, uh, is our education component, because we're going to hear from Frontier in a little bit, our 163, 114 is chewed up by the by the elementary school, and I, may, I don't mean this disparagingly, it just it is what it is, those are just numbers. Last year, this board put out a ballot question out for $300,000 worth of override, and today, as we sit right now, our budget deficit is $372,000. Now, I don't want to say this, you know, Solomon versus, you know, but there's, there's a great old line. Eight inches separates a noose from a halo. Last year it was a noose, and you know, frankly, we were right. Those just numbers. And those questions are going to be coming up again. So when we, say, when, you know, when you're saying two and a half percent, I know that's the, the, the levy limit that yep. you can raise. Yep. But why, when I, when I look at, um, like, the, what they use for your contribution, they said that your municipal growth factor is 4.32 percent. 
It's a great question. Whether the what, assess, the what's ass, the difference? The, the new construction possibly, or where we are in evaluation. The assessors go through and evaluate the property. This town of Sunderland is worth, I don't know, $300 million total of which we tax. Yeah, 350 $350 something million. million dollars. But the reality is much of it's open space and you know the, the tax burden falls on substantially on a residential base. We have a relatively small commercial base and a very, very small industrial base. Mm -hmm. So if you and look- And do you tax them all the same? We do. Yep. Okay. And you know, and then there's, there's, although, there's, there's although the, yes and no, I mean, sixty land in sixty one A. Well, is, I mean properties, but yeah, yeah. But, but we but have a lot of open land. space. We have a lot of open space that's protected. We have a lot of open space that protected sixty one A, sixty one B. There's a couple of sixty one Cs. All the APRs. And also we have we also have a lot of APRs that right. are that but are. But do they out. count that into in your equalized property value? I mean, your equalized. Uh, uh, valuation is three hundred and forty five million one hundred and fifty seven one hundred. Yeah. Does that include the lands that you cannot build on because right. they're protected? They by still those? have value to the farmers. Right. Right. Okay. So they still have they have still value when they can go and they can they, they can sell that land at to when they get done farming. They can sell it to another farmer. You just can't build on it. Just can't build on it. Right. But but I, I think you Pat you have a very I don't I don't totally understand how the state comes up with their numbers mm -hmm. but if you look at some of the hill towns you know was didn't our friend uh tom tell us this one person one, moved one, into heath? heath one person changed the whole value of the town in heath wow. by moving in and building one big chibanga house so so i don't know totally how how that works but i know and, and if you talk to buckland i think buckland was just in a newspaper the other day talking about their assessments how they so think right. some or some some of the where where somebody's zip code is, mm -hmm. is, is how they get. Oh, yeah. Shelburne right. Falls and Brooklyn. Right. Falls versus yeah. Buckland. Yeah. So, you sure you, did you read that, show, Sherry? No, but I've heard, uh, heard Andrea talk about it but before. I'm, it I'm, makes sure, it. I'm sure you've heard that argument hard mm -hmm. with another person. Well, I, I, I've seen, I, I, I'm asking my, I often ask myself that question, too, because half of Waitley has a South Deerfield Correct. zip code. And these, um, valuations that the state uses the 2015 income it's everyone who filed an income tax in that zip code uh, well right. how do they know how to break out the waitley sure. people sure. and conway is the same way i believe some it's people in conway bit. have shelburne. have shelburne fall um so is the conway money getting misreported yeah. is the waitley money getting misreported is that hurting deerfield that half of conway ha uh, half of waitley uses south deerfield right. addresses mm -hmm. I mean, and who do you who do you ask these questions? Sure, has a big deal. I spent a lot of time in the field. Terry, I yeah. don't. Again, I don't think you get a. I don't think it seems as if this is just starting to be a conversation point about where where and how. Uh, like you said, the four point three. I have no idea where it comes from. You know, I I, I thought I, our assessors are pretty told us our assessments have been pretty flat. So. And and I I also know Sunland does a Sunland's assessors are very um, diligent at doing the three year rolling. Uh, um, now it's five years, but it, it was three years. But so they are redoing the valuation every three years. They're very very they they were up on top of that. Um. But w so if we go, if we look at page twenty nine of thirty two, this is our school <laughs> choice funds, um, and we are we are no longer spending a year in arrears. We're actually spending a year and a half. Adjusted, right? Correct. Um, so, um, but and we're almost getting to the point where we're, where we're going to be spending the full two years, <laughs> and then we're only going to have one year. So then, and so we're on a threshold here. Um, that we we started to talk about last year. At some point, it, it needs to it needs to we need to take people off of school choice. Um, and the more children that we're bringing in as residents, and we are getting higher and higher population. Um, even though Nesdex says we weren't supposed to, the kids keep coming. Um, there, the fewer school choice kids we can take, there isn't enough room in the building. Makes sense. Right, because you're working with physical space issues. Well, Mr. Barashevsky is very concerned that by 2020, we, we, he is going to run out of physical space. I mean, wait, the, just to make that on this, the choice, like the, the allocated, the spending out of the account is 466000 roughly, little plus. 
and the you know projected intake is 340, right? So, um, so we're spending more than we'll take in this year. So, and, and we've been doing that for a while, and so that hence the kind of buffer is evaporating. And, to, and I, I break down the bottom for you. When we talk about being in the negative, we're not. It's, it's it, it, because we are, we're trying to spend, we were trying to spend a year in arrears. Mm -hmm. So cash flow wise, we are positive. We're sure. not negative sure. in, in our fund. That makes sense. So let me, uh, just to make sure it gets into this thick head of mine, we were allocating 100% of choice toward operations. Right, classrooms. Uh, yeah. We're spending it on classroom te classroom teachers yeah. and yeah. instructional assistants. Okay. Thanks. Um, the next page is our special education tuition um, account. We have um, this is a special education program that we bring students in, usually just from our other sister schools in the union. Um, I don't think we have anybody <coughs> that's out from. With, it's just it's just the four. So there's Sunderland kids, Deerfield kids, Conway kids, and um, the, Waitley kids. The, there is, um, we do have a student who's tuitioned in from outside our district. Okay. So we use that money to pay for some services there, and mostly it's speech, PT, OT, physical therapy, occupational. We pay for the uh, instructional assistance. We're recommending that 15,000 of the new position be um, funded from this fund. So we'll be left with about 6,651. And of important note, um, like the, the uh, speech therapy, PT, OT, that's not just for this program. That's used building wide, okay. uh, pre-K through six. Um, and then lastly is our early childhood. Now we, this is, we're gonna see, we've, we're gonna see more money now um, than we have in the past and that's because we changed the model this year. We were running two half day programs, four days a week last year. This year we're running two full classes, five days a week. Um, but the, it, what's, how, we're actually gonna bring in 90,000 this year and we're only projecting 75 next year. And the reason we're doing that conservatively is A, we're seeing kids come in with a lot of needs, so they don't pay. If, they, if they're in need of service, they, those hours are free. Um, and two, because Sunderland has the highest free and reduced um, lunch population, these people will qualify for a sliding scale of, of, of tuition. So we're trying to be conservative, um, but we, this is what we uh, will expend. And again, um, we're gonna take 15,000 to pay for that early childhood intervention is from here. So it's a combination of using our um, early childhood money, SPED revolving money, and um, a pro, uh, town appropriation money to pay for that one new position. Have you got, is, is it been long enough to get any feedback on the change in the structure of the program going to like full days as opposed Phenomenal. to, that's what I would expect because I think that was something that was holding, I don't want to say holding us back, but you know, you're doing two half days and that's difficult for, because now, it, well, right, because the majority of families now have two working you know, members, so I think that's a, a big change. That's a, that's a good, that's a good thing. And they can also um, get aftercare until 5.30. Yep. And they, that, for a fee. Sure. So. Right, right. So, and then the last page is just our, um, just our, our based on the populations of, of this year, all the different percentages uh, for the union. Um, the Union Regional and then Frontier Regional Assessment. So that is the elementary budget. Now we took the right hand side of this whole thing kind of got chopped off. Network copier. Yeah, those darn network things, I'm telling you. Uh, is yours in portrait? Because it should be in landscape. Do you want, you want mine? Oh, that's, that's fine. There's Thank more you. over here. <coughs> Electronic copies. That'll solve the problem. Well, I did send it to her yep. that yep. way. Yeah, yeah. we'll get it. I know, I, I, I'm telling you, David, it kills me with all this paper. Uh, it kills me too when I see it all come in like that. I'm like, oh. So now we'll switch to Frontier. 
PDFs for everybody. Yeah. Unless, you, are there any more questions about um, the budget? Anybody, any more questions? Huh? Okay. On this one, anyway? Oh, yeah. How do I turn that input off? Oh, it's gone. There it goes. <laughs> oh, so I, I didn't know. If, I didn't know if Ben was was leaving or not, but uh, I just I just want to let you know that um, on, on we, we know what's happened on the national level. I um, we did talk to the um, our police chief, um, and he probably he will be talking to you. We we have we have received a, a, you know emails of concern, um, and. And I know Ben and um, yeah. our superintendent and have, have have done you know you, you hold your drills you hold all that kind of stuff. Um, but what I I would tell you I I'd like to tell you is that um, if our 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 chief believes that some of the things that you've done in the past have, have helped. Put a better put us in a better position by having the, the communications, you know, through all the rooms. But you can push a button and you can talk to the rooms and stuff like that. But we, you know, we have asked him to talk to the state and the district attorney's office to help also, and you know, to if there's anything you need, not to hesitate to come and talk to us right away. Well, we did put in a capital request for a new for new security cameras because our security cameras are they're not good. We gave you examples of what right. we we can see a shadow of a person. We can't see a, see a person's face. Um, so we did put in um, a request for that, and I also believe we put in a request um, to put in a smaller water heater. When that school was built, they yeah. did it oversized it. They oversized it because they, they thought they were going to have two locker rooms. Or, yeah, yeah. They, but they had to heat the pool. Right. Or, or they're exactly. going to have two locker rooms. So our, our hot water heater is, oh, is the just staff ginormous. That's what it was. And it uses up a lot of energy in the building. Um, but then we recently just had a um, a whole what, a section of our boiler went down. Is that what happened? Yeah, section failure. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> crack or something. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. It's so, it's cracked in it. Yeah. So it could be That's something that we may want to start looking at. Um, Doing an accelerator repair program with with the state to replace the hot water heater and the boiler. And have we looked at that with green communities before? Have they looked at that? Chair? Um, they have been into audit, and there's some work that's going to be done soon. And we're getting ready to do another audit the for the last, next grant round. The last one they did, they wanted us to go to pellets. <laughs> that was yeah, no. That was like biomass. We were like, yeah. you know, we don't want to, we don't want to be the the, the, the the guinea pigs with with heating a school with pellets. Sure. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, again, again, just to let you know, I mean, I don't know what you would hear. Um, we do hear from residents of our community, and they they want to share their concern as well. I thought I'd just bring that up to you, Ben, and the school administration, and and please feel free that if you have any questions at all, you can talk to our chief at any time. Well, one thing I will say is, uh, Chief Dimitropoulos is at morning drop off almost every day okay. yeah uh, that's good week. Um, he's regularly in communication with the front office we had a meeting with one another today so it's a it's a very um, strong partnership for sure and yeah so I, I just hope you, you have his uh, number his direct number yep. and your, on your phone and if you have any questions for him please talk to him he's a he's a wonderful resource to have sure and he's any he will talk to anyone if it means talking to the state you know police and or the district attorney i know we were at a meeting a, a selections association meeting a couple of years ago and the district attorney's office uh dave sullivan with the district attorney was telling us about different programs they help with also so if there's anything that we can do or, or if you need anything just please don't hesitate to talk to us appreciate that i'm sorry we have to talk about that Well, isn't it Darius' oh, turn? Oh, oh, isn't it Darius' turn to push? Yeah. <laughs> sure. <coughs> so this 
this print here, the format's pretty much the same. I wanted uh, pink, I wanted to do red for the red hawks. And I was going to say, you didn't do it in school color scheme. Yeah, right? but the red was too dark, it was too much. So, uh, this is us, and I just. Whoop, to sorry, point go out back. Out. Oh. Sorry. Uh, but I wanted to point out the volleyball team. That's the basketball team. Uh, that's my sport, and I like it. I think it's great. I'm, I just love it, and of course, they won the state championship. Yeah, just like for the 40th time or something. I know, but what are you going to do? I'll take partial credit because I'm from Holyoke and that's where it was invented. Uh, and what knows just... about our incredible arts program? <laughs> where, um, you know, we, we talk so much about being a sports school, but our arts program, if anyone got a chance to go to the middle school or the high school uh, Christmas concert, phenomenal. Well, no, but I went to the Memorial Day Parade mm -hmm. and I think the biggest compliments that we received were from the Frontier Band last year. Mm -hmm. They were they were outstanding. And the Buglers, which I know is very difficult, um, they performed admirably. So and that's very hard. So but the band was out I mean, I can't tell you how many people commented about the band's performance. And we do have a uh, musical coming up. We'll give that a plug too. Um, the right. Wizard of Oz will be coming up. What date? The there weekend is? of the sixteenth. Plus it's almost Fred time as I recall, right? getting to be that time of year. Yep, it's getting to uh, Also, mm -hmm. to, to remember that on Veterans Day, we, we do, well, you know, Sunderland does a tremendous job out here. We've been, all the elementary school students, um, armed services from everywhere, and the buglers from the high school. But I just have to tell you, this year, I was just incredibly impressed because it was long, there were speeches, it, you know, a little brisk out there, a little chilly. Those students were so well behaved and so respectful. I, I was just so impressed. And some of them had come, they had made copies, so you know, they, and they were wearing these paper copies they had made, so you know that they were learning in school about what Veterans Day is, what it stands for, what is the importance of celebrating it every year. It, it was a tremendous experience. It, it's really tremendous. Last year it was just wonderful. This year it was so heartfelt. I was just totally blown away by the students and their respect and their understanding of what it is that we do. That's our, that's, that's our bugler and those are the, um, just the values that we do. It's not, and it is money and it is numbers, but it's also the values and the learning that they're doing in the Sutherland School and Frontier. So thank you. So uh, I want to point out this is our team at Schools Match Wits, and we won. Um, what do we go next? We need to see if it, it goes by top percentage of score. But okay. we won again for the, I think it's the fifth year straight. So yay us, and we do uh, have some uh, wonderfully brilliant students at Schools Match Wits, so yay for us. Again, our district mission statement, this is what we live by and our vision. Everything we do is related to that. Thank you. Uh, our strategic plan is the same for all five of our schools. We're, uh, we're striving together. We have a special ed task force, expectations for instructional practices. It's about critical thinking and clear learning objectives. Um, our professional development is second to none. We use our early release days. Uh, we talk about personalized learning. If you're in the education field, you know what that means. Collaboration, technology, and um, calibrating our assessment. Really important work we're doing. And um, again, systematic norms, understanding our assessment so that we know how to teach the children in the way they learn. Because if you know kids today, they are entirely different than when I went to school in the 60s and 70s. I graduated in 74. It, it was one size fits all, no questions asked. Today, it's totally different. Their brains are wired so differently. So, let's move on. Drives everything we do. So here's some data again, and we're gonna go through all this when Patty goes through the numbers. Same difference though. This year we had 623 students. We're not positive, we've got 663, but some of them will choose to go, uh, uh, they finish sixth grade, some choose to go different places, and some of our eighth graders finishing will go to a tech school as opposed to a traditional academic high school. So this is what we have now. 
We have 132 students with uh, disabilities, uh, educational <coughs> disabilities, economically disadvantaged, 30%. That's, that's getting up there. Our teachers are highly qualified. Uh, we have 56 uh, licensed teaching personnel in the building. Those are teachers and people who engage in teaching. We have 24 instructional assistants. You see the, the number goes down even though the Sutherland School has about 25 or 26 with 200 students, you can see we have 24 with 600, and that's because as the students get older, they need less and less of that independent support. But in the early years, we really have to put that foundation in and, and, and teach them those skills, uh, especially our disabled kids. And we do have quite a few at, at Sutherland Elementary School. But they do a great job. By the time they get into high school, they really do have them um, organized pretty well. Uh, building administrators, curriculum director, three. Assistant principal, principal, and curriculum director. Choice in, 160 students are choice in. Now we're still only getting 55,000 for them, rather. And that's an old amount. We, it would be wonderful if we could get charter school money. Charter school <laughs> money, which I don't know how come the charter school gets X amount but choice in, but this is what we get. But you can see that Frontier Regional is definitely a school of choice. People want to come to Frontier Regional. It, it, the school is a great school. It has a wonderful reputation. The students get great education there, and people want to come. We choice out 42, and that's, they, for whatever reason, they go to different schools. Charter school choice out, or charter school out is 52. That's costing us money. Each town pays, but on a regional base, um, uh, Patty will talk about that. We share those costs because we are a regional school. So uh, charter school, I don't know what to say, but uh, it would be great if we got that charter school money for our choice. Okay, thank you. So this is our overview, and again, we'll talk more in depth, but um, the entire budget is $11,754,404. We're asking the towns for $11,048,454, and um, that represents a 3.09 or 3.1 increase over last year or 331,509 over last year. And the same things are happening, the contracted bargaining agreement. Uh, we do have uh, sewer charges, that's 18,000. Um, transportation increase, central office, and that's the health insurance and some technology. And of course, we do get other funding. So these are some of the great things. Again, the winter, con the winter concert and um, you know, great kids. Thank you. So that, again, these are the increases. These are our budget drivers. These are our great kids acting. Um, I think that was guys and dolls. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was a wonderful, wonderful. I, I tried to remember. So again, our increases. $168,000 for salary increases, staff increases, longevity. The sewer charges. 18850 I don't know. I'm a little unclear. Did we pay those before, or is that something that's We did, but they were only charging us a minimal, and now they're charging us our actual. They're based on the water usage? Yes, and then we had an issue because we do have an irrigation system, and that just circulates. It doesn't go into the sewer system. So we're working with the town of Deerfield. They, we, we filed for an abatement, and they granted it. And um, our director of facilities and the head of their uh, sewer department, they're going to put the, uh, the same meter on the irrigation system um, so that we can get accurate readings. So. But it's that, still going to be an increase. That's where we are now. Yeah. Because, just, just so you know, I mean, some places they, they base, like, if you're doing a sewer reading, uh, they'll just go from, like, November to April, six months, and there's mm -hmm. usually no irrigation at that time, and they'll just double it. So they take out a whole day out the irrigation stuff so it is we only get uh, where i live we get quarterly bills here they in deerfield that we, we get bills twice a year yeah 
And it's just, that's not bad. Um, technology devices, so that's part of the one-to-one -one we're expanding our program to, for 20 to $25,000. Um, the MCAS-2 required testing and assessment that we need to do is now online. And so students uh, that take it 7th and 8th grade, they've been having one-on-one -on -one anyway, but we need to have enough devices specifically for that, but also to uh, any kind of learning you're doing in, in the 21st century, any kind of uh, education today requires to have a device. And so we're providing those for our students. Are the testing, the ones that you need for testing, are those dedicated solely to testing? No. no. We're doing one, we're trying to do one-to-one -one device. Uh, health insurance, 109364 So that's, and, that's... And you're staying with the Hampshire group? The Hampshire group? Yeah. Medicare tax, 11000 Franklin County retirement, 45000 uh, So some of the decreases, our summer services, we're decreasing by uh, 15000 Our sped tuitions, 23000 uh, Professional services, 11000 And other insurances, not health insurance, but building insurance, and things like that, 11000 So those are some decreases. Thanks, Terry. So again, the same chart, uh, we're getting $705,950 in other sources of uh, revenue. Uh, our special education gives <coughs> us 100000 500000 That's paying for salaries for teachers, IAs, and medical and therapeutic services, psychological services, and clerical support. Uh, special education revolving. 119, 540, and this is not this is not preschool. I meant in inclusive. Um, we have an ABA program for students with autism. We keep them in our building. Uh, they have special needs, and that I'm going to fix. But that is for our students that are in specific program. These programs we have, we do we do staff them. They need to be staffed. But the money that they save us, and we do get funding for it, but the money it saves the districts is immeasurable. Circuit breaker, again, 213,955. Circuit breaker, we're getting that next year, but it's going down. It, this is going, again, a state, mandated state, whatever, they're, they're going down. But that does right now pay for classroom teachers and instructional assistant and a specialist now. Our school choice, 229225 uh, Again, teachers, uh, guidance counselor salary, and instructional assistant. And our Title I is paying for a classroom teacher at 42000 So we're trying, we use our money um, to pay salaries, to relieve the load of salaries that we have. And So again, same difference. Instruction. This is this is our uh, big picture. This is what we're spending. The instruction is 49 percent. And this is a regional school, so buildings and facilities are nine percent. Employee benefits take up 20 percent. Tuition to other districts seven percent. Administration is seven percent, and other student services is eight percent. So um, let's move on. Again, this is where our money's coming from, but Chapter 70A is 24%, town assessment is 70%. That's from the four towns. And then SPED grant, Title I, circuit breaker, SPED revolving, school choice. Not a lot. Uh, administration is 7% of the budget. 7% of the budget, leading uh, building-based leadership and clerical services. Those are the secretaries in the office, uh, the uh, principal, assistant principal, 42%. School committee and legal is 3%. Superintendent's office and business finance, 42%. District-wide information management and technology, 13%. That's how that breaks down for 7% of the budget. Uh, this instruction is 49% of the budget. 
teacher department heads at 70% of 49% because we have 56 teachers. Our instructional assistants are only 10%. So it's a smaller proportion than it would be in the elementary. But again, the elementary schools need a lot more support than they do in the high school. Guidance and psychological services, 8%. Medical and therapeutic, OT, PT, speech, that's 4%. They're spending 5% five, five on medical uh, supplies and materials. When we say technology here, we mean software programs that uh, help with the teaching and learning. Our curriculum and SPED director make 3%. So that's where our instruction goes, 49% of our budget. 9% of our budget is buildings and facilities. Maintenance of grounds and equipment, 22%. There's a lot of business going on at the high school with the grounds. A lot of mowing, a lot of getting care of the fields, a lot of work going on over there. Heating and utilities, 36%. It's a very large building. Networking communications, the infrastructure is 5%. Custodian services, 37% of 9% of the budget. And it is. Yeah. It's there. Oh, yeah. okay. They're all the same. They look the same. I'm just joking. Other student services, transportation services, right here, 51%. Food service, 2%. Athletics and student activities. You don't see this at Sunderland, but 33% goes into the student clubs, the stipends, the sports all those activities, and then our health services, the nurses and those kinds of things. <coughs> Additional costs, now this is, uh, and Patty will speak to this, but it's line 5,100, 5,200 and 9,000. And this is 27% of the budget. And this is just something we really need to know about. Tuition to other districts, 26%, because in the towns, the towns pay, but in the region, we pay. It comes out of our budget. Employee retirement and insurance benefits, 74%. Um, so these are the, the 5,000 lines and that 9,000 line. So um, administration would be the 1,000 line, instruction is the 2,000 line, on and on. And when you get to 5,000, this is where that money goes. So again, our great kids, this again is, uh, I think this is middle school, and uh, these are some kids having a blast. Well, we couldn't do it without, without you, and again, we're doing great things at Frontier Regional. It's, our kids are lucky to go in there. It's, it's world class, we couldn't do it without your help. So Patty will, um, Go over it again. Again, it's the same numbers. It's just you know different. Then we can ask questions. Thank you, Dr. Kerry, one of one of the things that I, I don't think that we as a whole do very well is we don't we don't toot our own horns. Yeah, I hear that a lot. I know it. And and one one of the things that always. Um, I was on the Cape one time, I was in Hyannis, and there was a, there actually it was a charter school downtown Hyannis, and it had a listing of all the places that its students had been accepted. Not go to, but been accepted. I, I think, you know, it'd be nice if you guys presented to the towns, either, either in your annual report or some way, is that you get, and it gets out there, about where the kids are accepted too, and I and I'm saying that they're, they're, because sometimes you can get accepted at a place and you can't. There's reasons why you not may be, may not be able to go there, um, but it'd be nice nice to know where the kids are accepted um, to and different do, colleges. And the irony is, and that's a good thing to know because we do have that information. Uh, Char Allen gives us a, a, an excellent report every every fall, and it, it's thorough. It's our uh, SAT scores. It's it's where our kids are going, uh, how many schools they've been accepted to. Um, it, it really is a great report. We provide it to the school committee, but there. 
I there's got to be a different a matter you know maybe we need to go around to the school to the um, tell certainly tell our elementary schools give them that report the report's done and it's a beautiful it's a thorough report it, you, you just changed what we um, the annual report right. so uh, it absolutely probably should be yeah. part the, that report should be part of our annual report the, uh, I, I, to, but, but to me and again, we, we it's always been f different. You can read about um, the, the volleyball team and the field hockey team and the football team and the wrestling team, and those are great parts of my life. Um, but we never hear about the, the other things that go on, and I, I think se separates a lot of the schools um, and, and it really shows people the diversities that, that are within our schools. Um, and it'd be ni and a nice, and somehow, and again, don't, we, we're not the experts because we, we have a tough time um, communicating, getting the word out as well. But it'd be, ni it'd be nice, especially in the education, because I, I, I don't think people understand. I, I don't think they, they understand um where, where the kids are going and and you know if i was a parent right now i don't think i would hesitate to send my kid to gcc and then and then to go to first two years and go to another school after that i mean when you're looking at trying to afford an education it's it's a great way but that kid may have been accepted to harvard but some there's things in your life that that may not say that you he may not start out at Har that first year he may not start at harvard but I, th I, I think it, it'd be, it's, in, it, it's, it's important information that we can get out there so people and can that, see it. That is a point well taken, um, and, and I, I agree with you. And we will, Darius is writing it down now. The work is done. We have that information. And uh, Who exactly do we want to get word out to? What would be our target audience that we want to I, I think all of us. I, 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 I think it's anybody that that's won't when 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 you look let's say at the the Sun Elementary's budget right and, and we hear it I'm, and I'm sure any has heard it there's 57 cars at the frontier at the Sun Elementary School <laughs> in the morning well what does that mean and they, they there there's there's not an understanding that 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 those people are actually, you know, you, you have teachers, you have assistants, you have custodial staff, and, and they don't know what, they don't know how the, the staff is working with the students, okay? Should we carpool? What's that? Should we carpool? Well, either that or maybe park in the center of town. But, but I think if, if, people, if people know, you know, um, and, and, people can, and, and people can say, well, our SATs, our scores are such and such, but we don't know what what's a good SAT score today. I don't know, you know, but but if you say our kids are being accepted too, and and you you're listening where the the, the our students are, are or the programs that they're you know some some kid may choose not to go to college. He may choose to go to Juilliard, or he may he want he may become the world's best chef. Or in my case, a smoke, you know, a smoking barbecue person, you know, as they go to Myron Mixon's class down in uh, Georgia. But but everybody's doing different things, and 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 by bringing that out to let our community, because we, we should be proud. You know, we're spending a lot of our tax dollars. What seventy percent of our tax dollars goes to education. So what I think I heard you say was our community, because I've heard this before, and I think I heard it from at a regional meeting. Uh, pretty vociferously, you need to get the word out. And I think what they said, one proposal was, you should list just that information right in the front door when you walk into Frontier. And the whole point is, well, that's the people walking into Frontier. That's, almost, that's not necessarily well, people you need to sell it to. I think when you said the community, it's at town meeting. Absolutely. When or, we have, this, these are the people that we are, exactly, we're spending your tax dollars. This is the reason that we're, we're coming for this. This is the return you're getting on it. So I think that's the form we need to go to. Yeah, it's a good question because, you know, you talk about people who need to do better marketing. Well, better marketing involves knowing your target audience. Who is that? How do you get the message across? So maybe we need to look at better use of social media, too. Because let's face it, where is most of the community now? Let's face it, most of the community is not a town meeting. Anybody who's been to a town meeting knows. What's the percentage of eligible voters who are even registered to vote, and then the even smaller percentage of those showing up at town meeting? So maybe we need to look at, I mean, to get back to that, we 
honestly really should be including a percentage of that budget in marketing. Because one of the interesting things that though all of those numbers don't tell, I'm looking at like choice, charter. One thing I don't see up there is what percentage of students, for instance, if you're looking at Frontier, what percentage of students that could be going to Frontier are going to private schools? <coughs> we have that number is not accounted for up there. And, and, we and have, I, because we do, we have, we have to do but, you a, know, that number in needs January, to be rolled we in. We do a know, school attending and that it does include the private schools. And, and I, and I, and I, you know, back, back to the point, I, I, th I, I think it's difficult. Um, we, we have a former, um, professor at UMass and in animal science, Bob Doobie taught for many, 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 many years, not to age you, Bob. <laughs> Um, I have, yeah, I, I have the, today when we think of kids, what do we, we, talk, we think about the kid that can't make change for the dollar, right? Yeah. But we don't know that that kid probably <coughs> can program a computer better than, than yeah. guys from 15 years ago. We, we, we know, I know an engineering professor at UMass, okay? And, and he says, you know, Tom, sometimes you look out at the crowd, they got the hats on backward, they're drinking a cup of coffee, they got the newspaper out. But Tom, I'm working harder than ever to stay ahead of these kids because those kids, those students today think differently. And Dr. Carey said it earlier in her presentation, and, and I appreciate what you said. They, students today, teachers today, do things differently than when I was in school. Because I, I still remember my dad said, Dill's damn college students. And I was one of them, okay? That, that I was stupid as dirt, all right, for the most part. But, but things are changing, we're teaching differently. And, and most, we have to bring that story, we have to bring that story to those people so they understand that kids are just different today. Teaching is different. How many of us can do the math that's in, that gets sent home with the children? Most of us, if we try to do the math, are told, <laughs> my, my nephew, okay, has a, 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 a third grader that had broke his leg. Okay, so he's had to stay home. He's had to stay home a little bit with him to help him do this math homework, third grade math homework. Bowden, we, we can't do the homework today. We have to wait for mom to get home to, to help with the homework because mom can go online and find the, 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 now the school helps them with the homework to show their kids because we don't do it the same. And I'm not saying, and you have to understand, third grade math isn't the same third grade math that I, that I was in school. <laughs> It's it's and, and it's different, but we have to show our we have to show our we have to we have to show our families in town that pay the tax bills. We have to show them that we have good kids. They learn differently. We're teaching differently. And we're preparing for the 21st century. It, it's and we just have to show that somehow. Right, we should be because the world was a vastly different place, you know, 30 years ago. You look at the the advancement of technology has exponentially increased and we need to prepare people for the world they're going into not the world that older generations came from well, I use a slide rule so I am um, still I, works I find it interesting <laughs> one of the things that um, I, my, I have one that's a freshman in college she's got four coaches and the one thing I heard from all four coaches which I thought was very strange is she makes great eye contact when you talk to her. She, she looks at you, you know she's listening. And I heard that four different times and I'm like, well, isn't that the norm? Don't we look at each other? These kids don't. That, this is something that college level professors are noticing, that our children don't make eye contact when you speak to them because they're always in the phones. And I just thought that was the weirdest Please thing. Time. <laughs> but I just thought that was the weirdest that, comment. That filters, that, you know, she's playing is. basketball, and the commentary I'm getting is she makes great eye contact. Well, yeah, <coughs> but if she's scoring any points, then. <laughs> but I, but I do think I do think it's important that we that we sell we sell our we sell our I education. agree, and I hear a lot of that. I think that Sherry's got a great thing with the town newspaper or the town paper that goes to the homes. I can't continue to call up the Greenfield Recorder and say, oh, guess what? Could you list the 59 colleges that our students have been accepted at? I, you know, I mean, as it is, I send them stories. Um, See, and, and, and now you're getting into my pet peeve, okay? We have a local newspaper that doesn't print any local news anymore, 
all right? And well, if it's it, inflammatory, I'm sure you know. Right, and 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 I and I and I would say and, and I would say that when there's good things that happens, you you almost need a PR. Derek, you almost need a PR person mm -hmm. that because you have a lot of students at Frontier that do wonderful things. Wonderful is just beginning. I, I read at the at the men, and Ben and and Bob Bob's on the men's club board of directors that I am. When we look at the some of the students' um, letters, their applications, and write what they did. It, it, it's a, it's like reading. A, a great novel because these kids are so involved with not not just school or athletics but helping people mm -hmm. you know and 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 we get it every year and, and I mean this has been going on for year and year but people don't people what they what do they see they see kids listen to hip-hop they see kids with baggy pants they see kids they don't understand that and 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 we don't sell and and somehow we have to sell the, the thing to the, again, for the people I can sell it to the parents. I can, now, somebody's hearing it. We have 160 school choice students that choose to come to us. Somebody's hearing it somewhere. I can send it to the parents, but I don't, you know, what do I, what do, I do to the retired folks or the working folks where their kids are gone? What do, how do I reach them? You've got to work with social media where you, the you're, retired folks you, you are know, sitting on Facebook. You know, one, one of my great time. great things that I have uh, the opportunity to do is work on the board of directors of the uh, the uh, senior center, the S South County Senior Center. I'll tell you when when every year the football team, the wrestling team, the baseball team, they go over and they help they help the senior center. You 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 could only if you could only imagine the joy that those kids bring to to every one of those people in that in that that center. But they do that, and they don't do it for the recognition because it doesn't go in the newspaper, okay? But they do it to help. But those are the kind of things that our our town members don't know about. That you know they they and and the kids on their own time will will go out and do that kind of you know, do that kind of stuff to help their neighbors, their their communities. So I, I just think it's a, a wonderful presentation that we don't like. You said we don't get out. We don't get that story out. A lot of good kids. Yeah, that's amazing. And I agree with you. And, and it's a point well taken. Patty, do you want to see Sure. So we, we can start on page 11 of 54. Um, it's hard to see because it's in the middle of the teacher credentials. Um, but this, is, again, is our student and staff data sheet. And on the left hand, um, we freeze it on October 1st. So we had 623 kids, 121 of them were um, special education. When we look at our projected, uh, the grade seven, that's our entire grade six enrollment. Um, and as Dr. Carey referred to, and Darius can go further, we don't always get all 125. And, and there, I think, Tom, is your point, that's something those parents who are making those choices, that the, the whole 125 don't come, they need to know about these things. Absolutely. About these schools. And Darius does a great job um, meeting with parents. Um, in fact, he's got another one tomorrow all evening, right. mm -hmm. um, meeting with the incoming sixth grade uh, parents. Uh, we do, and um, we also do a, um, uh, a day when all the sixth graders come to the school. Um, they have lunch there, so they, they, they what, do you, what do you call it, shadow for a day. Step, D Darius, you don't, you don't prevent the kids from going to tech school if they want, do you? To go up their, their days? Thank you. Because there is there's, there's there's a town a that does, or a city. That, the there's a city in Franklin the County that does that. The changed in the last five years is that students have to sign up to go. They don't just all go. Many, let's say about 10 years ago, I think it was like everybody went no matter what. Mm -hmm. um, now, if you were interested in tech school, you can go. And I would say a good percentage of kids. So you allow tests. them to go up to, to, to look at what they have to offer, right? Correct. Thank you. Correct. Please don't change that. We're all paying a lot of money, so. <laughs> well, and, and again, but, but, but some kids. It, it's an avenue. It, it's, their, it's their pathway to, to success. Absolutely. It, it's it, it's needed. So we won't get all those grade seven, and we might lose some of our grade nine, just to what you're saying, Tom. Um, that's when they make the decision if they're going to go to a technical school. Um, so we're projecting 663, but it will probably be. What do you think, Darius? I think we're going to be about even. 
We have a small, the senior class only has 85 students in it. And so the class coming in out of the 125, I imagine we'll get about 105 to 110, and then we'll lose about 13 to tech. So it's gonna, it's gonna break, if I've done the math on our separate sheet of paper, it sounds like I'm just doing it in my head now, but um, it, it, we, we're about two or three ahead on this, my estimates, that'll be two or three larger than last year. <coughs> and on the right is our staffing, and um, we did have some staffing changes that happened um, uh, that happened after the budgeting. So we had an English teacher re who retired. Um, so Mr. Modesto took that position and he increased um, social studies and uh, industrial arts and um, what's the third one? Academic supports. Uh, so he made some changes there. Uh, and all together for the year, we're actually down 1.1 people. Uh, we did some change. We are one of our. We lost one IA uh, because we lost the student that they were attached to. Um, Dr. Carey was referring to the IAs we have at the high school. We have what, five special needs programs at the high school. Um, well, middle and high. But between so. middle and high, we have five, and that's where most of our um, IAs are located in those programs. Um, if you look at the teaching credentials, um, we've got eight with bachelor's degrees, 36 with master's degrees, 10 with master's plus 30, and five plus master's, uh, 45 or CAGS. Um, on the next page, this is our summary of changes. So our budget this year is 10716945 945 The steps cost 56956 uh, the negotiated increase was 106,650. Uh, longevity payments 10,500. Uh, an allowance for an increase for non-union 16,135. We had to change the school choice funding and bring back 65,622 dollars, um, and I'll explain why we had to do that later. Um, coaching stipends uh, 3,156. Our, we, our coaches are s staying with us longer. Um, increase in mentor stipends, 3550 I shouldn't say this is an increase. This is something that we um, don't budget for every year, and um, I never know where to put it, so we're budgeting, we're budgeting for it this year. Um, we, have a, we do have some retirements, but the, it's a decrease of about 37978 from the prior year, and our hiring um, in FY18 saved us 56536 uh, gas expense, $400 increase, unemployment tax, $806. Uh, health insurance waivers, $1,000. So in our collective bargaining unit, if, you, the, if the teacher does not take our health insurance, we pay them $1,000. Um, custodial supplies need to increase $2,000. Uh, regional transportation, $5,114. Again, that's based on um, the consumer price index, which was a 1.83% increase this year. Um, our Medicare tax will go up um, just because our salaries are. Central office expenses, uh, 15391 Sewer charges, 18850 The student technology devices, 25000 That's to maintain our one-to-one our -one, uh, devices so we can you know, switch them out. Uh, Chromebooks only last so long. They, don't, they stop taking up their, uh, software upgrades, so we've got to switch them out. Uh, Franklin County Retirement Assessment, I, I think Sunderland had the same, um, 45,128, and Mr. Kowacki's ex explanation was that people are just living longer. <laughs> um, and our health insurance, 109,364, and we've talked about that. Um, we had a decrease, some small decreases, 970 in life insurance, uh, copier costs, uh, 1373. Our monitor stipends decreased 3,000. Um, technology cost 3,481, and that was basically just based on um, allocations. Other insurances, 11,037. That's basically we're saving um, our property insurance. It seems to be going up, but our workers comp, thank God, has been coming down because it's based on a four-year average, and we haven't had any claims, so our workers comp is coming down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, professional services, 11555 That was another one of those um, K-12 
cases, David, where I kept looking every year, like, why, why are we over so much? And I think this was something we were paying when we had bonds, okay. um, and we're, we don't have them any longer, so we're dropping the cost. Will that go up with the, uh, then I suspect that might go up if we do bond financing. Exactly, we'll have, to, we'll have to budget again, because there will be a cost. Um, decrease in sped summer services, 15688 and decrease in sped tuitions, $23,590. Um, so the net change is an increase of 331509 um, So we would have a budget this year um, of $11,048,454. Um, and again, the next few pages are all the detail of what that is. And then starting on page 25, you, you've got all the funding. And I um, want to talk about a couple things. Um, well, I always like these pages because it tells you the true story of what we're actually spending. So if you get to the end of this, you'll see that our total budget for the year is going to be, if I can get to the end of this, 35. 37. See, mine's double-sided, David. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> uh, it would be 11 million seven fifty four 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 zero four. Now, so, now, excuse me, Patty, is that your total budget or is that your total budget you're looking for local revenue is that that, is that that's all your total, state and federal that's everything and, that's every revenue source that we have all right so all your federal and state and local grants are included in that right and that's and that and you see it by column so yep. with the fy9 proposed is is what we're looking for from our towns mm -hmm. the school choice is going to provide 1.95 percent yep um, the circuit breaker, 1.82%. Uh, the SPED revolving, 1.02%. The SPED grant, 086 And Title, 1.36%. So do you have, any, you have any grants or funding that either from local or state levels, federal levels, that are, they say, okay, you hire a science teacher, we'll pay that salary for a year. All right, so you don't have any of those? No. We okay. sometimes sometimes get a summer grant so that we can run uh, well we always have a, a a camp for sixth graders coming to seventh grade and sometimes we get some assistance from the state with that but we haven't gotten that in two years now okay so no there's it, it, it's it's uh, we and it's not like we don't look um louise, no, 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 so, so, yeah, louise I, law yeah. and sarah mitchell look but they're all based on the free and reduced population, and we never quite qualify for them. For, for us, in, in Scott's been around in finance community, select like board for a number of years now, and, and if you've been around, you're always, the federal government always say, you know, they'll have cops fast, or, or, and they'll yeah. say, oh yeah, we'll give you, we'll pay for a police officer. Temporary mm -hmm. grants. For one year, then, 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 <coughs> then, you're, then you have to pay for the Afterwards. Then, Right, and, and those are tough things. I, I was just wondering, because sometimes it makes, it commits you to something that you may or may not be understanding what the commitment is. That's right. we, we've been getting more private grants um, lately. Um, we just got one from a company um, that's gonna give us a lot of um, supplies for our chemistry and our biology classes. I was wondering with like technology too, if there's you know some opportunities in that, in that respect too. Mm. <clears throat> Well, uh, we did, there was that big opportunity um, a couple years ago, the, but it didn't turn out to be advantageous for us. Um, if you remember, the lawmakers attached that, um, the grant to the expansion of the 911 systems. Um, but when we applied for those grants, they were gonna cost us more than if we went out and did this stuff ourselves. Right. So we ended up not taking advantage of that. You have to do uh, an analysis. Program. Exactly. Grants aren't always all they're cracked up to be. Exactly. So, um, so um, one of the things uh, I, I want to talk about, if we look at page, um, I'm going to down here, page 37 of 54. This is our, <coughs> our choice and charter. So once again, um, in FY17, 
the state had projected that we were going to be upside down in our um, charter choice tuition by about 67000 so we had to budget that number. But it didn't turn out to be true. We ended up getting revenue, um, which is our beginning balance here in 18, of $466,843. So they projected that we were going to be short 69, and we came out 466, 84, 843 to the good. So we didn't spend that money because <coughs> um, we weren't expecting it. But so we were, we are using it in 18 to pay for some teachers. Um, but if you look on the far right, once again, they're projecting that we will be bringing in a 1.2 million, but our charter and choice out will be 1.3 million. So there'll be a deficit of 35,672. So we had to, you saw the increase on the salaries of 65,000. We had to move $65,000 of school, of, of salaries that we were putting on school choice to make room for this deficit of the 35,672 and leave us a little bit of a cushion um, here of about $60,000. And, and we like to do that because um, if we get one move in, that's a, that could be an out of district placement, which, which we've been whacked with a couple of times. Um, so we, we like to keep a little bit of funding there for that. Um, the next page is the uh, circuit breaker, I think. Now, this is being affected in two ways. One, the legislature is funding it at a lower and lower level. And second, to our benefit, our, our out-of-district tuitions are going down. We have no child in pre-K to six in an out-of-district placement. The only kids we have in out-of-district placements are seven through 12. And right now, um, what we're, we were having a lot of is 18, between the ages of 18, and we've got them till they're 22. And then the uh, uh, DMH picks them up. So we, Karen uh, Ferrandino, our SPED director, is, is instead of continuing them in private out of placement schools with high tuitions, she's now creating career tech, like a career path for them. So they're, they're attending um, American International College, who has this mm -hmm. um, program called uh, Career Path. And so they spend some of their time in a classroom, and they spend some of their time with a person who's coaching them on how to work. So it, it, it really is very innovative, and it's saving us money. But that also means we're losing circuit breaker money because we're not paying for the tuitions. Now the catch-22 is, because our tuitions have been so high, we were getting $400,000 a year. Well, we, we, we use those money to build these in-program house, uh, these in-house programs so that we could stop the flow out. So now we've got these programs built and we need to pay for them, but the money's going away. So we've, we've got to find other funding sources for, for, for this because we've got to continue these programs. We've got, in our ABA program, we've got uh, four, four students. And I told you May Center is 116 times four. If we didn't, if we, and, but we're running the program with one teacher and three aides. So, but, we, but, there, but, the, but the funding's going away, so we're gonna have to find it. So you're gonna see our budget, that's why our budget's creeping up to 3.09. Not that, that we're adding new services, but we're losing the funding. So again, you're shifting a recurring cost onto the onto the appropriation. We, we, we use the money when we have it, yep. and then we have to move it back over to the other side once the funding goes down. So like I said, so that's like a double whammy, because not only are they funding it at a lower rate, but we're also using, uh, we're, we're not uh, eligible for as much. Well, that's why I think kind of to one of the points Tom was talking about too earlier, like these numbers are great, but I really think we need to have a historical perspective. Like, I'd almost like to see, especially like I'm thinking a 10 year spread to take us back to just before uh, the economic crash. Because you really need to see not, it's great to see these from one year, but I think it would be of immense use to see how these things, these numbers pan out over 10 years. Because then you can look and say, all right, all right, you know, because we say, okay, this big chunk here is taken up with, um, essentially contractual obligations. I'd like to know how are those con contractual <coughs> obligations, how have they changed over the last 10 years? 
and especially because it tells you a very a very interesting story. If they're steady, if they're not steady, and then we talk about the percentage of the state that goes down because there's a lot of information that we we really need to tell the story better. Mm -hmm. And I think I think we need to do a little better job of getting some of that historical perspective on like these items here because that allows us to say, okay, you know, we're still having to spend the amount. And then you get you know, like one of the points you were making earlier, Scott, about we we're spending record amounts of money. But the amount of money that we're getting or that we're having to pay more is increasing dramatically over you know, the last 10 years. So I would love to do a 10-year history, <coughs> but our general ledger doesn't go back that far. <laughs> uh, and we already did talk about it. Well, that's one of the things I think we really need to think about is not just general ledger stuff, but we really need to be thinking about databases and tracking some of this information on a historical basis, even an access database or something like that. Well, would help. Our, our financial software is, is basically a database. Um, and I, I can manipulate right, and you should be able to export some of that out. Absolutely. At least what we've got now, right. but it's a matter of, and I know there'll be a little work having to go and populate that for the prior periods, but mm -hmm. I really think once you get that, then on an annual basis, you just export it out into that year. And I think it will really help illustrate a lot of... The, but, but the second complexity we have to that is that before I arrived, they were not using the, same, the DESI chart of accounts. Yep. So I can give you four, three years of data, but I don't know how to match up that old four years of data. So it, it may not it might not be apples to apples, so that could be a problem. But I mean, I, I agree with what you're saying. I just don't know that we have the uh, manpower to get us 10 years worth. But a special project for graduate students. There we go. <laughs> um, page 39 and 54, our our um, our excess and deficiency fund was certified on April on January 8th at 352,567. Uh, we have a correction of an insurance withholding, which may cost us about $60,000 to fix. It's been recommended um, by our CPA, Tom Scanlon. Um, this is something that I had been bringing to our prior attention. Um, and to fix the, so basically what it is, is they're telling us that when we, we pay from September to June for our July, to June coverage. So then in June, if we, if we should be, ha there should be two months worth of withholding sitting there in the account to pay July and August bills, but there isn't. So we need to, to look at that. And th Tom has tested this for two years and now we've got, we, I was hoping we would get it cleared up so that it would be, it would, we wouldn't have to use our excess and deficiency. It would just be a correction and our excess and deficiency would have been lowered by that amount. But um, we didn't have time to solve the riddle. So we're gonna be working on this come April and May and get it fixed for this year. But that's gonna take about, up about 60,000 to fix that. Uh, and then the committee voted to use half of the remainder uh, of 146,284 to uh, lower the assessments. Uh, I, I wait. No, I brought it up. I said, Tom taught me. Well, to, and, and again, for, for us, it, it's doing it the right way because then, then things are above the bo above board and it makes sense to, to, to us. And, and, I, and I, when I see that, now, now I can, now if, if you say, oh, we used $10,000 from E&D to do whatever, I'll say, well, it makes sense because they appropriated those, those dollars. And, not, and, and again, for us- is, It's is, not voted yet, Tom. That's why there's been no we, notification. Well, no, no, but I mean, when you do it with this budget, right? By, because you, the, the E&D is spelled out like this, then it makes sense to me, and and maybe I've just been doing budgets for too long here. But but it makes sense that you that I see the appropriation. It it makes sense. It makes sense how you do it, and 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 I'm and I'm not going to tell you how to spend that money because that's you know that's you can spend it however you want, and you know you you could hire a new teacher if you wanted with that money if you wanted to, um, but but at least I know that it's been appropriated correctly, and for us that's important. I agree, and, and I appreciate that guidance, and we did, um, we really did a, a lot of research. I did with the 
It's not, it, it's not easy, is it? Desi and with our school attorney, and we do know now, and we've really gone over it in policy committee, the subcommittee, the, uh, the policy committee, and we've talked about it. Once, so this is embedded in the budget. This will be voted on. But if we take another dollar from it, we need to notify the four towns so and they have their 45 days to let us know if they agree or disagree or not any no notice at all yeah and we and we can say and, and the, the 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 four board just like would say yeah that makes total sense go ahead and not even vote they don't even have to vote on it right. but you just have to notify us and and say oh yeah you know like if you need if you need if your boiler if your boiler died you needed eighty thousand dollars you would say right you would you'd knock say, the table oh you would say, hey, the, bo yeah. the boiler died. We need eighty thousand dollars. We're going to spend it out of E and D. Do you <coughs> mind? And we would go, oh, that's that's why you got the E and D to do that stuff. But you just let us know. Definitely. Perfect. That, that was great, and I I was actually able to uh, use that guidance with the school committee because I don't think they were clear on it either. So we're all clear on it now, and that's yeah, it's yeah. it's one of those little machinations that the state does, you know. But transparency is important. So but, then you don't have to have, then there's no questions. Absolutely. Thank you. Pages 40 and 41 are, is our school choice receiving report uh, between the, the end of last year and um, the December reporting. So we're down three choice students. Um, but you can see that the majority, if you look in the right-hand column under FY18, the majority of our students are coming from Greenfield and from Gil Montague districts. Um, but as Dr. Carey said, we have 160 um, students. And the FTE right now, will, we had 163 last year, but they stayed 1.4966. So some of them came in late, some of them left early. Um, and then you look at the grades on page 41. Um, and just so you don't think my math is loony, I don't compare grade seven to grade seven. I compare grade seven and 17 to grade eight and 18 to see. That's their income. That, so, so, so we see there we had 30 kids when they were seventh graders. We still have them when they're in eighth. We had 28 eighth graders, but now we've only got 23 ninth graders, so we lost five kids. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I do the math on those. We probably lost those five kids to technical schools. Well, do we, I was wondering when you said we lost, I'm curious to know what kind of statistics do we keep on why kids are going outside of, because I think without that information, we're kind of blind. But that would be the same person know. that would be doing the PR. They, the, we would need the, they well, could do PR really, and retention. We need to really kind of think of that, though, because it's, it's important. It's sort of like an admissions if, counselor. If we don't, right, because if we don't know why people are leaving, how can we correct it? We do know the number yeah. of kids that choose to go to Franklin Tech. Darius has great records about where these kids are going. I, uh, it's not even, actually, Franklin Tech doesn't concern me, actually, because I think that's really, I almost consider that another facet of Frontier right. in that sense. It's to me, it's well, who's going to choice out charter and private, mm -hmm. those three things. And to me, if we can't get our arms around why they're leaving, how are we ever going to correct it to, to make them want to stay? You know, for whatever, I think that's an important part. Um, just one quick question. And I think because if this sticks out to me, I'm sure somebody else is going to have this question too. Is, and if you don't have it now, you may need to prepare like a quick elevator pitch for, because I'm looking at like the, um, percentage of instruction, percentage of budget for instruction in Sunderland versus Frontier, and there's a big difference. Like Sunderland is uh, SES is 78 percent, but when you get to Frontier, it's 49. Uh, I'm sure somebody's going to have a question about why, you know, why the difference on that. There's, there's many more. Um, actually, there's more pieces of the pie. So we yeah. have student activities. We have health insurance. Uh, we also have retirement. These are pieces that are taking out of the pie. Insurance. Yeah, retirement one was, for Frontier, was like almost 30%. Yeah. The retirement. Why? Because I'm looking, because I know somebody's going to say, oh, wait, you know, why is that? Yeah, the other one, David, you think about, think about uh, charter school. You know, Sunderland has, what, one, two, three charter kids. Frontier has 40 you have more. one charter kid. Yeah, one. one. Yeah. But, but I mean, choice. if you in that charter, that charter cost could 
There's 52 at the Frontier, so think about that coming off the budget. You're going to see that. And, and just, just to me, charter schools and life or insurances are, are huge, or well, health costs. Th that's why like, I, the historical thing is important, because then you can look and say, look at the trend lines. Because that's the thing, is you get those categories and look at the trend lines of like, my gosh, insurance has been eating up a bigger and bigger chunk of our costs. <clears throat> and those are really important things to get a grip on what's Absolutely. changing and how we can grapple with those changes. <clears throat> it's so, not fun getting all the information, but it's important. Page 42 and 43 are our school choice sending reports. So these are our, our students, <coughs> and we are down one, which is good. Um, but you can see most of them are going to Hatfield and Northampton. It seems to be the two popular school choice out. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then on page 44 is our charters. And we've got six more kids going out to charter this year. Um, it looks like we're going to be spending about 974625 and um, the kids are going to Four Rivers, uh, PVPA, and the Chinese Immersion School. Um, and it, the bulk of them are going to Four Rivers. Yeah, which that that's like one of my pet peeves about charter schools. If if you have a charter because you're teaching Chinese immersion, I get it. Well, well, yeah, what's, we've what's talked four, about this before. Yeah, what's right. Four Rivers doing that we're not doing? What's their <coughs> charter? What's their specialty? They're 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 that's college a prep just like we are. Yes. So right. they, it kills me that 28 of them are there. What and, and I will tell you when we look at those questions as to why. The, uh, the biggest reason they go to four charters, small school. Class size. Small class size is what they, yeah. yes. That's, that would be the main reason why they would go to Four Rivers. I, I'd love to, well, I, I would be fascinated to be, I'd love to get this same reason, but polled separately to say, would you be willing to increase, pay for an increase in taxes to accommodate that kind of environment in a public school environment? Well, it's fascinating also, to see that. Oh, dear. It's also, yeah. it's, you know, <laughs> so the class sizes at Frontier are smaller than the semi elementary school class size. The average class size in middle school is between 18 and 22. Yeah. They have like two classes that are 24. And what's your average? higher than that. Yeah. And so when you talk about class, small class sizes, compared to where bigger schools are, are struggling with, with class sizes over to 30 in, in middle school, we don't have that. So. Yeah. You know, if they're looking for class sizes of 14 or 16, I mean, that's not economically feasible. You know, that, and, we're not, you know and so I don't know, you know, I don't know what Fort Rivers class sizes are. Not Fort Rivers. And, uh, and I would challenge you to say so. if that's a good class size. Yeah, I, it is. I, I, you know, I, I, especially when you start to get into those age groups, I, I don't know if those are good class sizes. So I can say, but I, I don't necessarily believe. Well, so. I think it depends on the subject and a lot of other factors. It's very difficult to step back and make sweeping broad judgments about class sizes. And I think it varies even from the students in a given class. I mean, that's, probably, that's probably one, of, that. one of the, you know, which I changed in the last, the last, now I'm in my second year of doing it, is I do a coffee with the principal during the day and I ask um, sixth grade parents who are, you know, considering other schools to come, see these classes in action. Right. Walk into them, see the class sizes. See that there's, you know, you know some of our English classes are even smaller because of the breakout of for special ed. I mean, you're talking about classes of like 16 on some of them. You know what I mean? It's like, and see, see what they look like, see what they're doing, you know, this kind of thing. What are the misconceptions of, you know, the big school? Right. Right. You're not a big school, right. you know, and so it's uh, by any means, you know, so yeah. <coughs> there is about how our, our, our AP classes is, are expanding. Um, uh, and you, uh, we don't know that they get that at the charter school, but. Right, I mean, we, we're expanding a whole, you know, that's a, you'll see it in the paper soon, because we'll be releasing it, but we're, you know, expanding the AP curriculum. I've heard, I've heard that mentioned. I've seen the poem an issue before, too. And so that's, you know, really um, going after the appetite of those, you know, you know, I guess that would be the private school as opposed mm -hmm. to charter. I don't think, you know, charter's taking the top percentage of students. I think that, you know, either the, the, maybe the private schools are taking those. Because um, I think you know we have a very good program there. Um, I think it's someone who's looking for something that's a little. The grass is greener on some things. There's always going to be this kind of sense of choice, and right. 
you know, that kind of thing. Um, and, and I get there's always a percentage of, uh, well, you know, when you're sending kids to private schools, there's a whole host of reasons why. Yeah. That, that may not be directly. Right. And I'll try to compute right. private schools. You know, if yeah. someone wants to pay forty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 for right. education, that's their, that's their, and we don't lose money on that. We lose money when they graduate. Exactly, right. right. Yeah. Along that, what's the cost of attendance at Frontier last year? I, uh, they just released them. Just released them? Um, I, I haven't had a I chance to download it. Probably like yeah. in the 17,000. So again, it's a bit, that's an important piece here. It's yeah. not saying yeah. anything other than the cost structure is a cost structure, but we, we, lose, we lose sight of the fact that there's a cost of attendance and that the money for choice coming in does not cover the cost of attendance, which is the primary gripe about the charter schools. If cost of attendance was the baseline formula for all the shuffling around, we would not be having this discussion. Yep. Right. So for every for every for every student that goes to charter, I have to take four choice in yep. to make up. For Understood. That. Again, so it's not the same playing definitely. field. So yeah. it's like you know, competitive One formula, wise, really we're doing very well there. One I mean, formula. You, I mean, you got to look at you got to feel bad for Greenfield. I mean, you know, the amount of kids they have going out. Right. right. They have a percentage. I mean, they must have a chunk of their budget is just outgoing. Yeah, right. outgoing. But there's, there is, there is, there is a, a real misnomer with respect to charter in that it doesn't cover the cost of attendance. It's underwritten by the home district. Substantially underwritten as we talk about 17 or 13 or whatever. It's 5,000 bucks. That's lost in the noise. Right. And then when the towns are having a bad year, they're not coming to you and saying, hey, can you make an adjustment exactly. on it with the funding right. from you? And if it's such a fabulous system, it should be able to stand on its own financially and not be supported by taxpayers in that sense but that's all we will we're gonna we go on. So, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna read us in from digressing onto that so if you look at page 45 of 54 I break out our choice and charter by town <coughs> so at the elementary level you have 10 choice kids going out and one charter at the 7 through 12 you've got 13 choice kids and eight charters out for a total of 21 um, now this is if you look and if you look on the right hand side this is one of the issues that Mr. Decker always raises about the regional agreement. Sunderland it, your total choice cost is $240,080 but because there's nothing in the regional agreement to say you pay for your own you're actually paying $305,248 by formula. So you're paying $65,000 more. And Waitley is paying eighty thousand less, and Conway's paying ninety-seven thousand dollars less. But as I always tell Mr. Decker, it's a two-to-two -two situation. If we brought this to a vote for regional agreement, would it pass? And, and I would say to Mr. Decker, okay, that we are a regional school district. That you can't pit one town against another because of any moment. And, and that this is what this is what bothers me. This, this, right. is what, this is what bothers me. The, the, the school agreement that we work that we're working under right now, at one point was in a very recent past was very beneficial to the town of Sunderland. When we voted to change the um, charter, it was not beneficial to Sunderland. But what we ha what we said, and what many people got. No, we're going to pay, pay our fair share. And I always try to tell Mr. Decker and those of same thought, the town of Sunderland didn't make, never made the request to change a charter. That came from, from others. And, and Sunderland agreed to change a charter because we felt we would pay our fair share. It's, this year it may benefit us, next year it may not benefit us, but those kids, every kid at Frontier is ours. Mm -hmm. it, and it doesn't matter what, what town what town they come from what town they but when we signed when we signed the charter when we paid the bill when back in 1954 when we took the step to do what we did we did it because we were we were saying the four towns are going to work together to make to, to, to pay for that education right plain and simple so i have i have a f fundamental problem when people in a lot of things when they look at well the town of whiteley or the town of deerfield or the town of sunderland or the town of conway should be paying less because today but that's but these a moment weren't in time. But these weren't issues in 1954. So I mean I, I see your point Mr. Feidenkamp <coughs> but this wasn't an th these weren't even in our, wasn't it wasn't then. an issue in 1954. Yeah. That's true. I, I, it, uh, transportation costs were 
or or some other cost. <laughs> right. The the general point behind there, there's the there's something yeah, else. True. There was something yeah. else right. that was no, that, there was something else, and and I, it it's when you are in a district, that's not an argument right. that you can have. If we're, you if, really can. If we are going to look at the regional agreement, my two biggies would be funding capital and OPEB. <laughs> Those to me are, are the two sure. most pressing issues that our regional agreement of course. does not and OPED, address. And OPED was never thought about oh, until the, issue. the yeah. last few years. Exactly. And, 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 and capital, in, in capital, that's one thing in our regional, in our South County EMS thing, that we, we, we had a talk with um, the Highland service that has, is kind of like a regional um, ambulance service, and he said uh, South County EMS was way above if out of all the things you guys, he said, us oh, do your budget right because every year when we can talk about capital, we have to go and bend the knee looking for somebody to support it. And and we never think about capital. We never think about capital. Well, you know, just how you talk about how education has changed. Well, I mean, we can't look at these agreements as written once and then never changing. And it's, you know, like some it's people would disagree, documents. but the Constitution can change, too, it's, you know? They're living it's documents. There. Exactly. I, I just, uh, and, and again, we, we've had other, before you came, Patty, we had discussions about people, towns paying what percentage because of why, and I just think it's a, it's a, a needless conversation. We, we agree, we're, we're in agreement, we're paying what we are, and it, it may flop in a couple of years. So page 47, now we're looking, uh, we are looking at our assessments. Um, and uh, the first page is the five-year enrollment average. And um, you will see Sunderland is going to have a small decrease, three-tenths of a percent. Um, in 18, you were 23.73. And in 19, you'll be 23.7. So you had a difference of a, um, a loss of eight students um, wow. from the dropout year of 2012 and the bring-in year of 2017. Hmm. And uh, page 48 was looking at our revenues. Um, the assessments to the town are going to increase 349,615. Our chapter 70, we got a whopping $20 per student for $11,100. Excess and deficiency, there will be some funded, but it's going to be a decrease from last year by 10,766. Regional transportation, uh, we're saying we'll, we're, we'll increase 30,691. And the revolving transportation, there was none. Um, in FY17, we actually got less than we had thought we were going to get. So there's no credit this year through that. Um, down below that is um, your minimum contribution set by the state. And then you can see Sunderland um, is estimated to go up $39,482. Um, and page 49 is, is showing the same Subject thing. Um, in the foundation enrollment, Sunderland didn't have a difference. It was 130 and 18 and 130 and 19 for the foundation enrollment. Um, yet you're still going to go up 39,482. Uh, page 50 is um, what you're going to pay. So in 18, your assessment was 1,731,437. This year it'll be 1,796,889 or a different, an increase of 3.78%, $65,452. And then uh, page 51 is the calculation. Um, we take the budget, we decrease it by the aid, we decrease it by the uh, excess of deficiency, we take your minimum contributions, and then the rest is by the percentage, and that's how the uh, assessment is assessed for the operating budget. And page 52 is, is um, how we calculate the regional transportation. Um, the estimated regional transportation uh, per the cherry sheet is 156818 I think that's too high. I don't think we're going to get that. I looked at the end of the year report, and what was eligible was 230614 So I'm taking 60% of that and saying we'll probably more likely get 138368 
Um, I mean, just if it doesn't go, if it comes in a lesser number, we're fine. If it goes a higher number, it goes in your E and D. No, 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 no. It goes in the revolving account now. Okay. It comes right. straight Debt back to, to you. It comes straight back to you as yep. a credit the revolving in the following transportation, year. Right. Yep. Um, and then the last page is just to, like I just make sure I'm I'm in budget um, in balance between our budget and our sources. Um, and then the last page again is what you saw in the elementary budget, all the percentages. So did Darius get the big in increase this year? Did his pace? Yes, his went up this yeah. year, huh? Yeah. This is, we really, there's nothing new in here. I mean, this is basically everything that we have, we're just trying to bring forward. Um, um, we're addressing changes in enrollment and then we're continuing our PD. Um, we're gonna be focusing on assessment and student achievement uh, and increasing the use of technology in the classrooms by our students, uh, which is what we've been trying to do every year since I've been here. Questions out there? Sorry, Bob, you picked the school budget night to come. Sorry, we're over. <laughs> Can I ask about OPEM? Sure. Why is it that we can't have a percentage of payroll existing? We know we know people are going to retire and have it under the 5200s section and have it funded and just have it sit there. Are you not allowed to do it? I don't have any original agreement that says I can assess you. Yeah. So we need to amend the agreement, is what we're saying for that? Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't it just be a budget item? I'd have to. Uh, I can it's ask. A, it's, it's a cost. It's, a, it, it's, it, not, it's it, not. It's not. It's not. It's not a cost. No. It's not well, a cost it's until we use it. But it's a. I understand. But we, I, I think about uh, a couple of years ago when it was a warrant article requirement to retire three to you know, meet the obligations for three retiring staff. Mm -hmm. This year it goes down a little. So you can take that noise out and have that pool of resources that sits there. But those, that wouldn't be in there. Those, those retirements are, are contractual buyouts. OPEB is saying you need to fund future retiring teachers insurance. That That's a contractual buyout of sick time. I don't think the, that's not included in our OPEB calculation. I can say about that. I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. you're, you're not. You're not. Well, I do the valuation. I I give the information to the people yeah. that do the valuation, and yeah, I've asked right. them about yeah. that, and they said no. You don't. Add, that's not okay. considered open. Just curious. But that's a good question about why we can't. You can, you can take a lot of a lot of noise out of the budget discussion yeah. for a long time. It becomes recurring. We know we have staff. We know that there's post benefits. You know, find a way to have a slot of money in there. That's not twelve million dollars in ten years but reflects, you know, a whatever average, I, I know it is. <laughs> but, you know, have that, anyway, I'm, I'm just thinking out loud. We do, have an, we do have an account open, and it has $100,000. <laughs> I, I would, again, if we know that that's an obligation coming forward, I can certainly support that as a, as a budget line item. It makes that's, sense. That's it pretty, does, because you know you're going to have to pay. Day. After you go through the first couple of cycles, then, then it's an expectation. Exactly. Right. Right. Some days it... Repeat myself, but some days it hurts. Some years it hurts you. Some days it helps you. Interesting. But it's an expected. It's an expected expense that you've taken care of. We're actually in the fourth year of ours being a, an operating budget line. Yeah. At the town level. Yeah, absolutely. And we fund it every year. Mr. Moderator, any questions? So just to be that guy again, $162,535 of education increases set against our $163,314 in new growth. We took it all. I know. Some years it works that way. But it's an honest, it's an honest set of facts that has to be put forward for the public. No, and I, and I, I, I can understand what, you know, um, Education versus public safety, plus every other service sure. that you that you have that you have to provide. We've tried to remove the verses a number of years ago, but mm -hmm. I think the, the the numbers are really really important. Right. But I and but I, I just I wasn't here when the last override failed, 
Was but last I year. saw. I, well, no, the, before last year. Oh, that one hurt. But I saw the, I, I, that. That I can look at the trends and see how many parents right. choice their children out right. because yep. of the cuts that we made at the elementary school. Yep. And right now we've got all our own kids back. Yep. I totally and I did. would hate to see that thing, that trend repeat itself again, where we have to make such a, cuts in the elementary school that our parents start walking to choice and charter out again, because that's going to be, that's, you're going to bear that cost again. Sure. All over so again. you're either investing in our own elementary school or you're investing in cho 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 choice and charter out. Well, what, the one benefit wow. is that at least now we have the ability, we have some data. <laughs> to show the effects, yes. whereas before we did. Right. We got the wound yeah. in our foot where we got shot. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 yeah. we, we had <coughs> we had a resident that was a choice choicers their uh, child to local school, and the parent came and says, "Tom, my my daughter is going choice over to the local school." And they get crayons, and they get glue, and they get paper, they get pencils, and they get this, and they get that. And and if you ask me why I choice my kid to that school, that's that's why it happened. And and I says, well, remember when you had that no sign in your in your front yard? Well, our tax rate is fourteen dollars a thousand. The town that you're choosing in is twenty thousand dollars a thousand. What do you think the difference is? Yeah. There's those Brands. crayons yeah. and whatnot. And and, and 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 I'm and I'm sorry, but that's that's a the hard fact. Sure. And 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 it, it wasn't said maliciously or anything, but it's, it was it was true. He says, "Well, we're, we're, at the time we actually we we were around twelve, we were lower. twelve, lower. twelve fifty. Um, but it's true. I mean, it's one town you're paying twelve dollars and fifty cents, and the other town you're paying twenty. You're gonna. There, there may have. You may have the option of more things that goes to that school. I, I still say that. You know, we have to make. We, we have to find some way that makes it affordable for the families that live in our community to do it. Um, I'm still not convinced that local property tax is a fair way to go about paying for education, especially when when the governor. And trust me, when we go to Boston and we and the governor stands up in front of us and and tells us that he's given there's twenty dollars per per child, um, you get a thousand local officials and no one's getting up and cheering. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't think have you ever heard that cheer anybody cheer for that, Bob, when you've been in Boston? Never. It's been pretty quiet when he says yeah. that, huh? And we and, they, and, they, and and Bob has been to a lot of them. Bob used to be a selectman in Buckland and works at Franklin County, so he knows what goes on. Twenty dollars a thousand, that or twenty thousand that's twenty dollars a student. $20 a it's tough. Slap in the face. It's tough. It's because we're all mumbling under our breath about the real impact of it. <laughs> yeah, thanks for all the work. Thank, thank you, it. thank you, Scott, for. Uh, we bring that back up, but yeah. it's true. Oh. How do you pay for it? It's, no, it's, yeah. that's, that's our that's our job. Right. Okay. Yeah. Mm. What helps to go into the process, armed with all the information. Dave, how are you doing? This is your first meeting past nine o'clock oh, as chair. Now I'm telling <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll try. I'll. <laughs> All right, Bob, come on up. Yeah. Hi. Hey, Bob, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. You guys want to come up too? Because you're all, I'm guessing you're here for this. <coughs> Bob, why should we aggregate? Um, Hi, Bob. Nice to, nice to see you again. <laughs> nice to see you. And yes, you do need to uh, uh, find a different way to fund schools off of the, yeah. the property tax. I completely agree. That's, yeah, that's a whole other. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get that out in the open. All right. Um, I facilitate a, a group of interested energy committee members every couple of months. And uh, they were starting to talk a few months ago about the idea of aggregation. And um, so they came to us at the COG to say, you know, can you help us organize? 
Uh, so that's what you have in front of you is, is if you're interested um, in doing this, this would be uh, aggregating on behalf of the residents and businesses within the town of Sunderland. Um, the way the law is written, each town has to do their own aggregation. There is no there is no option to do a you know, regional group, but the idea with this effort is to take as many towns as want to move together forward to uh, to get this done and and <clears throat> you know have a larger electric load that could then go out to bid has it worked for hampshire uh for hampshire county yeah. um the effort that happened that was underway down there did not get approved by the, the dpu okay. uh, there were you know certain reasons for that but sure i just understand the model is similar though um, the model would be similar, and there's there's actually a, a, a little different model that uh, is in process down in the southeastern part of Massachusetts. Okay. Uh, there's 23 towns down there that are doing okay. a similar uh, type of process. Um, <coughs> they started a couple of years ago and, and ran out the bid and, and are in the, the first uh, supply contract. And any other historical any other historical um, examples we can look at uh, across the country? Um, there are, are many municipalities across Massachusetts that are that are doing this. Aggregating. This is a, a law specific to yeah. Massachusetts at this point. Uh, I can't speak to what happens in other parts of the country. Just curious. Yeah. Just, you know, somewhere somehow it's been I think, done. I think it is being done in other right. parts of the country. Um, you know, some of the aggregation consultants uh, work in other states, not Got just it. Massachusetts. And is this for supplier or supplier distribution? This is, this is specifically for electricity supply. So supply. Okay. okay, supply. So it would be um, <clears throat> essentially the town taking ownership of that process yep. of yep. providing the electricity on behalf of the residents. It's a the law requires it to be everyone's in unless they choose to opt out. Uh, that's you know written into the, the legislation, um, and part of the process that you would go through is to you know put together a plan. Uh, that would then go to the DPU, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, part of that plan would be to describe the, the process of notifying residents that they have the, the right to opt out. And certainly anybody that, that currently has a, uh, you know, another contract that they, that they like, they can continue with that. There's no reason to change anything. Um, or they can stay on the basic default rate for the, the local utility. Mm -hmm. um, so it's... Um, process is that, that there are right now 12 towns that are definitely um, have said that they're going forward, uh, at least in the process of picking a uh, electricity aggregation consultant. And okay. we have a meeting scheduled for this Thursday with the, uh, you know, the folks that have been appointed to represent their select boards uh, to begin that process of putting together a, an RFP for that consultant. Okay. So. You know, we'll go through that process of, of picking a consultant, and then uh, you know, any town that wants to jump on after that is certainly welcome to do that. That'll be part of the, the RFP that more towns can join. Um, mm -hmm. But then that consultant will then take over the, the process. I'm out at that point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's the handoff. Uh, <laughs> that'll be the big handoff. Uh, and that consultant would work with each individual town and put together that plan that would go to the DPU for approval, assuming that that, um, you know, is approved, you know, then it's uh, the process of putting together an RFP to go out and get the electricity supplied going forward. And, okay. you know, there's, there's a lot of reasons for why some towns are, are getting involved in this. Um, you know, the biggest one that I've heard so far is the desire to, um, to, to uh, encourage production of more green power, yeah. especially green power locally within the, the New England states. What's the mechanism for that? Um, just by, by going out to bid and saying we want to. Oh, you want to buy green power? We want power. to buy Got the, it. electricity. Yeah. You know, you're not building out your infrastructure. Um, we're not yeah. you know, talking about towns building anything. Right. Um, right, right. Just encouraging that through yeah. the purchase of the yeah. supplied electricity. Um, and I won't profess to be an expert on, on how that all works. <coughs> Excuse me. But that's the, the general gist of, of what folks are interested in doing as part of this process. Nice. So, takes town meeting vote? Uh, 
it would take a town meeting vote. I'm not sure if yes. it yeah. really is what you, so um, I've got some sample uh, warrant articles that you could okay. consider. I can fire that off to you if you're interested. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, the, the town meeting would vote to authorize you as the select board to um, contract on behalf of the residents and, and okay. businesses within the town. And then it's in your hands to decide whether you want to sign a contract with a consultant first, yeah. you can decide not to. Uh, and then later on when you're talking about um, awarding the bid mm -hmm. for the electricity supply, that's also your decision whether or not to, to say yes or no to that. Okay. So right now it defaults to Western Mass Electric, right? If you don't, if you don't choose anybody? No. Yeah, if you don't go Ever source. Yeah. Ever source, yes. There's a, the basic default. And, and what, you're, what you're saying is that if we take a town meeting to vote, yeah, we vote that we want to do this. Every homeowner in Franklin County would be, or in Sunderland, Sunderland yeah. would be a member of this aggregate, and that's who, whoever's chosen Constellation, whoever the company is, that's who would be the residents of town. Sunderland would be buying their electricity from. Supplier, right? That's who would be supplying. Unless you opt out. Unless you opt out. Right. Correct. So. And it, you know how it would look to uh, you know the residents would be um, it would just be the, the name on the on the electric the bill. bill would change for the supply line. Um, you know EverSource would still be sending the bills. They're still maintaining the transmission lines. Right. That's not going to change. That's not going to change. It's right. just the supply. So everything else operates the same. Another reason, if I can just interject, aside from the possibility for purchasing renewable or greener energy is also a greater price stability. Uh, Eversource can change their rates every six months, whereas right. the typical contract that we're talking about here with electricity aggregation is two years. Uh, th th thanks for answering my next question, because I was wondering like, what, what the period is, you know, how often we'd have to go out and renegotiate. Um, and it, it, as point. I understand it, it could be up to three years if you... Depending on how you do it. Um, okay. You know, what we're talking about is, is multiple towns needing to kind of work together to, to come to an agreement. Yeah. Um, you know, I would anticipate that there would be a, you know, a, a regional advisory group, perhaps, that you would be able to somebody to, you know, would help to kind of discuss all of this rather than, you know, doing it at multiple individual select board meetings. But, you know, the consultant certainly could come and sit here and, Answer your questions as well. Okay. I remember when the HCOG was here making this, the same yeah. presentation a number of years ago. So hopefully this one works out better. You know. Yeah. <clears throat> How do we get out? How do you get out? Yeah. That's always. Um, that's an excellent question. Um, you know, everyone has the op option to opt out. Certainly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that would be in the negotiation of the contract. Mm -hmm. the, with the consultant. So we get a we get a, we get a petition to town meeting, a town meeting warrant article is there, it passes the town meeting the town wants out. Okay, how, how do we do that? We don't want to follow in the lines of the EU. We we need to yeah. make sure how you can get out yeah. too. Yeah. Difficult. yeah. yeah. Um, okay. you know, you're ultimately in charge of a right. contract that you sign and, and you know, to make sure that there's a, a reasonable termination clause in there. Um, I, I don't have a specific answer for you of how it works in you know, other places that have gone forward with aggregation. But Something to discuss out. with the consultant once the... Okay. And when do you need, it, when do you need notification from us? Mm. Well, it depends on when you want to be, you know, if you want to be involved in the, the choice of the consultant. Um, as I said, we're starting this Thursday to, um, to draft the right. request for proposals. Um, you know, that'll take a, a little while to, to work through all the details on that, and then once that's issued, uh, the general rule is that you give them a month to prepare a reasonable response, um, and then coming back to interview proposals. Process. Mm -hmm. Process. So, you know, I, at this point, you can jump in anytime you want, um, or you can wait to, to see what town meeting says and um, opt in after that. We'll definitely have a, a, a you know, requirement. And I'm sure that you know, it's not going to be a problem for any consultant to add towns right. after the fact, um, because they get paid by 
low is not so aggregating it. You know, the more they get the low, low the they more get. money they're making. So they've got incentive. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you don't have to lay any money out mm -hmm. um, unless you want to, you know, have your town council do your contract or right. something like that. Yeah, but um, you know, certainly the no cost for participation. There's no cost for participation if you okay. if you don't want to spend any money. Any other questions at all? Or? Hmm? <clears throat> all right. You're easier than the school budget. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not going to give you a second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This is something the Energy Committee has been discussing for the last year or so, ever since the Hampshire uh, effort. Um, went under or? Went under, and we changed. wanted to see if it could be corrected <clears throat> in some way. We had uh, other towns meet with our committee, um, Bob Armstrong from Conway and then Sweetland mm -hmm. from South Fairfield came over and discussed what the issues were. And uh, we think it's, it's a good idea because it takes advantage of economies of scale to get a better rate, to get a better diversity of energy resources. Right. As an energy committee, our mission statement has always been to um, steer the town towards more renewable energy, and this is one way to do that. Um, as uh, as well as the price stability, as we as we know, every source is well, going up, all yeah. up, and uh, and this is one way to to say, okay, we're going to take some control over this now. And the cost of renewable energy, while a little more expensive than fossil fuel, does not have the erratic swings in costs that fossil fuels tend to have, too. So you don't see that wild swings so based on time. OPEC yes. or, or yeah. whatever. So. We'd also have to look at our current supplier agreements. I mean, how we get yeah. out of those. Uh, we have a multi-year supplier agreement already. There's an execution of that agreement. Right. So it's interesting. There's, there's, there's right. all lots of pieces right. fitting together. I mean, you certainly the town yep. would come under the, the aggregation, but yep. you could choose to opt out until your contract is yep. off the renewal. Then you could <coughs> and then Mm. You want to opt in as a town. Mm. I don't know how to That's notify right. the townspeople how they could how they could participate. Right. Well, right. Yeah. That's important as well. Yeah, it's essentially to tell them how they can opt out. Correct. Um, right. Because you know if you decide to do it. Right. It's like leave. a negative consent right. thing. So. Yeah. And that's just you know, it's in the mass general law that that's how it needs to happen. Okay. Right. So I will send uh, that sample warrant Please. Mm -hmm. yeah. to Sherry. Yep. yep. And, uh, Thanks for appreciate any more questions. Okay. You know where to find me. Thanks for coming Thanks down. Sorry, it's hard to wait. I think it'll work. It'll work. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, it's no different than you know us telling the schools, hey, did you try to you know band up with the other schools right. to save right. money? Right. It's the same basic concept. Right. We hope to have an informational session at the Sunderland Library sometime mm. in early April. That would be good. Jim Barry, who's the Green Communities Coordinator, but he'll also talk about electricity aggregation. And this will be a chance <coughs> for Sunderland residents to hear more about it in advance of town meeting. Excellent. We'll broadcast that both here and the website and library yeah. site. Great. Thank you, Eric. As soon as I know the date, I'll let you know. All right, great. Thank you. Thanks for coming in, guys. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Minutes. I only have for you the 220 minutes. The 212 ones are in progress. I was out last week, so I'm catching up. Uh, move, move the minutes to 220 on February 20th. Second. <coughs> Excuse me. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry about my coughing tonight. This I know. I'm not a sore away. throat. I'm sniffling. <laughs> oh. I'm with you. All right. And then uh, next up, we have. Board of Selectman updates. I'll defer because of time. Yeah. yeah, same here. Okay, all right. Uh, we need to open up the town meeting calendar, correct? <coughs> I'm just looking here. Board announces the annual town meeting warrant closing date, March 22nd, 2018 at 12 noon. All right. We're getting there. So. Right. so we're going to post the annual town meeting warrant. Are these announced the dates? 
I know. It's that time of the year. Yeah. It is. Yep. yep. Move to open the annual and special town. Oh, and we're not having a special. Move to open the annual town meeting warrant with a closing date of March twenty second. Is that what? It's April. Draft review, regular meeting, ETM, ETM. It's going to be thirty days with a closing date of six Friday, six weeks prior to the ETM. Second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Three to zero. Okay. Here we go. We got one box checked. Oh, okay. Yeah. The start. Yay. You gotta start with something. Got a check mark. Right? Got a check mark. <laughs> um, do you have any updates you wanna go over at all? Uh, no, I'm just coordinating meetings uh, with the capital planning and the financial management team to uh, review our preliminary numbers um, and our capital requests, so probably sometime next week. Okay. And then we've got our meeting for North Main Street on Wednesday at 5 Yeah, o'clock. Wednesday so, at 5. Oh, nice. so that'll, that'll be good to get all the interested parties together to actually visualize yeah, the project. That's the DOT and everybody. Yeah. Yep. And the, nice. Is it uh, and the consulting firm, so hopefully we'll get somewhere on that, uh, <coughs> at least get them all in the room to talk. Yeah. In that sense. All right. Is that for us also? It is. Yeah. Where are we meeting? We're meeting here. 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 Yeah. Yeah. That's oh. what I thought. Okay. Yeah, it's your meeting. It is a posted meeting. Great. Okay. All right. And then we commence with the field trip portion of the meeting. All right. And then we have, <coughs> excuse me, correspondence from Linda Lapaca about <coughs> someone becoming a tree city. Uh, move to act on this next week. Oh, thank you. <laughs> to read on it. Yeah, yeah there is there is a requested appointment though that we could probably act on tonight. Someone interested in some of the pathways committee? Yes, we have a name. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Looks see. like uh, Ms. M Melissa Perro or Perro. Perro, yes. Looking interested, and in, as she's expressed interest in the pathways committee, that's good. I uh, move to a pointer. Mm -hmm. I'm a second. second. All, right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Right. That's good. And uh, thank you for volunteering, Linda. Exactly. <laughs> That's, as we see with the, one of our topics coming up uh, in our regional selections meetings, you know, involvement. So we really appreciate that. Thank you. I would just like to uh, make a note that Melissa Rowe. Oh, to come to and uh, after living here a very short period of time, so Melissa, welcome to town. We'll make sure the welcome wagon comes over and visits. <laughs> that's oh, cool. that's right. We haven't got one of those yet. <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on it. We'll work on it. Yep. I hear it's going to hand out barbecue too. Yeah. yeah so. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to town. Here's some ribs. Um, all right, and then we have <coughs> need to name the park. Yeah, park naming. What's that? We have the need to name the, the Riverside Park. One of the um, requirements is is we have to put up a sign, and in order to put up the sign, you'd have to have a name on it. We're gonna have to put a name on it. Um, so. So they've got a suggested name. For yeah. Us. And, Sunderland Riverside Park. Yeah, it's fine with me. Motion. Yeah. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Welcome to Sunderland Riverside Park. <laughs> uh, and that, unfortunately, is going to conclude our evening. I know <laughs> everybody's disappointed, but you know. <laughs> um, So our next meeting will be Wednesday, February 28th at 5 p.m. here for, like we were talking about for the Main Street Project, but our next regular meeting will be Monday, March 5th, and we will also have our town caucus on that oh, yeah, same right. night. Yeah. Wow. So if everybody enjoys an exciting, rowdy caucus, come yeah. on down. So do uh, a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right.